Hello, everybody, and welcome to day two of Gauntlet Community Open Gaming Weekend in September of 2022. Um, my name is Mike. I will be the GM for this, and my pronouns are he, him. Uh, a little bit about this event. Um, so the Gauntlet is an online role-playing gaming community. Uh, we have members all over the world um, where we've played tabletop role-playing games um, online. And we've been doing this for well, quite a few years. Um, it's a community where we mostly focus on um, tabletop role-playing games in the story games, um, small press RPG, and old school Renaissance circles. We don't tend to play a lot of traditional games, so you won't see a lot of D. And it's not that it never happens, but you won't see a lot of D&D or GURPS or, um, you know, uh, uh, or the Star Wars Age of Empire. We, we, we don't, we don't do the, we don't, we tend not to do the real uh, traditional large press games. We, we really focus on the, on the smaller games in the, in the community. Um, the Gauntlet is also a podcast network. We run a forum, uh, we have a daily blog. Um, it's, and it's a really, really, it's a really fun community to be a part of. Um, I joined the Gauntlet back in 20, back in late 2017 and have been GMing since 2018, I think. And this is, I think my fourth or, it's either my fourth or fifth GCOG. We usually run two or three of these a year. GCOG is Gauntlet Community Open Gaming. And it's our, it's our semi-annual uh, mini convention where we open up the calendar to anybody who would care to play with us. Um, it's free, it's open, and it's a way to introduce people to indie games, online gaming, and the Gauntlet community. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been playing tabletop role-playing games for a long time. I started back in the early 80s with the Tom Moldvay edition of the D&D basic set. Uh, I played a lot of D&D in the 80s. I played a lot of GURPS in the 90s. Um, in the aughts, we, I, I played a lot of D&D third edition and then Pathfinder um, until 2015 when my Pathfinder group broke up and I joined a group that was playing uh, mostly story games. They invited me in to play a game called Dungeon World. And that was my first exposure to Powered by the Apocalypse games and story games in general. And ever since then, I've pretty much been, sweeping, been, uh, been swimming in the deep end of the story game pool. Uh, well, I've, I've yammered enough about myself. Let's, let's go around the table and let, my, let our other players introduce themselves. Let's go clockwise around as you are in my gallery view. So Mona, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Mona Shihe. So I have been on the gauntlet only for a few months. I, I think since June or, uh, yeah, when I joined the lab, I joined like at, on the, the last GCOG. And, and I think you are the GM for like my first game on the Gauntlet. It's the Spirit of 77 game. I thought you were I thought you were in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that one was yeah. that one was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So I, I haven't been playing for that long because I don't have a like reliable local group. So I have read a lot, but yeah. Well, welcome aboard. Glad you uh, glad you wanted to to play this. Um, glad to have you. Um, and um, Kava, am I pronouncing that correctly? Kavya. Kavya, thank you. Yeah. Uh, would you please introduce yourself, please? Yep. Uh, my name is Kavya. I use she/her pronouns. I've been playing TTRPGs for a little over a year. I've been playing with Gauntlet since around this summer. Um, I haven't played with you before, Mike, but I have played with Mona a couple of times, so I think we should be able to get a good um, character vibe going pretty quickly. Um, my main goal in um, TTRPGing, apart from, you know, RPing and telling a good story and all that, is to be as chaotic as possible, so there we go. I look forward to it. Fantastic. All right, so um, I guess a little bit about the game we are actually playing. Um, so we are playing uh, Quietus, which is a role-playing game of melancholy horror uh, written by Ollie Jeffrey. Um, Quietus is a stripped down, forged in the dark game. Um, so it's um, mechanically it uses a D6 dice pool system. Mm -hmm. 
uh, kind of like Blades in the Dark. Um, it does use a, a, if you've played Blades or other, um, other forged games, um, it does use something sim it, it does use something similar to blades um, uh, um, yeah God I'm like blanking on terminology the dice um, pool yeah it uses the dice pool and it uses the um, uh, not effect uh, position thank you that's the word I was looking for um, it uses something like blades position system um, where you're uh, in in quietest when you, depending on how tense the action is um, you'll be really, you'll be uh, depending on your character's emotional state you'll be um, that's going basically that's going to basically set the, uh, the uh, how dire the consequences are um, again it's kind of like blades position where you're um, in quietest your uh, in quietest it's called you can be rolling uh, from an uneasy position from a, um, God, sorry, I'm, I haven't played this game very much before. In fact, this is the first time I've run it. I just want to get my terminology correctly. I believe there's uneasy um, controlled and probably some standard. Yeah, it's uh, uneasy, tense, and desperate. So it your just roles got can. Worse. Yeah, exactly. So you, so, um, so if things are uneasy, um, the consequences aren't quite so bad. If they're tense, they're worse. And if you are desperate, they, the consequences can be very bad indeed. Um, we'll get into mechanics in a little, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is a game of melancholy horror. It's designed for a GM and one or two players. And it is designed to tell stories of sort of like tragic horror stories, like uh, some of the media touchstones are uh, films like Heredity. Um, um, or 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 the Strangers, which was a home, which was one of those like home invasion horror movies, um, or the Babadook, um, or 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 even something like even something like uh, Lars Trier's Antichrist. Another one would be the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, this game explores the intersection of tragedy and horror. <clears throat> So the other thing about this game is, um, as a GM, I'm coming into this game with very, with basically no, um, basically no, no pretext. Uh, we're going to be creating our characters and the situation together as a group, and then we're going to take it from there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll play to see. We'll play to we'll play to find out what happens. Um, so I want to do a. So let, I'm going to go through a, 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 a boy, I can't talk today. We're going to go through a brief exercise called uh, called CATS. Just uh, that stands for concept, aim, tone, and subject matter. Um, it's a way just to make sure that we are all here to play the same game. So the concept of Quietus is this is an RPG of melancholy horror that's equal parts tragic and terrifying. We're going to create our characters and the situation together at the table and then play to find out what happens. The aim of this game is to tell a compelling story of melancholy horror. Um, you know, it's possible play, it's possible the characters will escape to tell the to tell the tale, but it's also equally possible that our characters are going to meet their meet their demise in the course of the adventure. The tone of this game, I'm going for serious. I'm going for uh, I'm going for horrific because this is indeed a horror game, and we're also going for sad. Uh, and the subject matter of this game. Um, we haven't decided what our characters or our situation yet, but in general, this game is going to deal with horror, tragedy, and possibly death. Almost certainly death. Not necessarily those of the player characters, but that will be on the table. Any questions on concept, aim, tone, and subject matter before we proceed? No. Fantastic. Next thing I'd like to talk about is emotional safety at the gaming table. Um, do you both have links? Do you both have the character keeper I sent you? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, if you could hop over to the safety and resources tab, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about emotional safety, which I, I 
I use safety tools in every game I play. I think it is especially important to use safety tools when we're playing a horror game. Um, playing role-playing games can be an emotionally fraught or um, can be a, an emotionally fraught experience where we're putting our emotions on the table. Um, sometimes it's difficult for in our brains to separate that what we're experiencing vicariously through our characters isn't really happening to us. And sometimes those, those emotions of what's happening in the game can bleed over into what's, um, can bleed over into our actual emotions. And sometimes we may be carrying these stories with us for a while after the game is over. Each of us have a different set of life experiences. Um, subjects that you might not have a problem with at all or think perfectly fine to talk about or even play with in a game, I might not really want to, to deal with um, in a game setting. Because uh, the purpose of this game that we're playing is to have fun. And each of us individually is more important than this game we're playing. Safety tools are a means of trying to put bounds around, um, trying to put bounds around uh, these places that, that are um, about, potentially emotionally fraught um, and give us a formal system to talk about them, to prepare ourselves, uh, prepare ourselves before we go in that direction and to wall off things that we just don't want to go. Um, you know, like, you know, put, put flags on landmines so we don't stop. So we hopefully don't step on them. Safety tools aren't foolproof, um, but when engaged with in good faith, they really can come a long way to emphasize the fun of a role-playing game without, without really, you know, with, um, to mitigate some of the danger. So we're gonna be playing with three safety tools. The first one is called Open Door. And Open Door is about our individual personal comfort. Um, open Door means that anyone, that, Open Door just means that we are all free to come and go as we please from this game. Um, this is not a commitment. Uh, this is something we're doing for as long as it's fun. Anyone can call a break at any time. Anyone can step away from the game at any time for any reason and then come back when you're ready. Everyone is empowered to say that, you know what, this game isn't really what I, I'm not really enjoying this game. So I think I am going to step out. And if someone does decide to resign from the game mid, mid game, our reaction will be cool. Sorry, this wasn't to your liking. I hope we can game again to play something else in the future. That's open door in a nutshell. Do we have any, anyone have any questions before we move on? No, no. Cool, cool. The next tool we're going to talk about is called Lines and Veils. Um, Lines and Veils was developed in the late aughts by uh, RPG designer Ron Edwards for his game Sorcerer. With Lines and Veils, uh, this is a proactive tool where we can name subject matters or possible situations that we just we either don't want to deal with at all, or we only want to deal with in very, very, um, very limited circumstances. If we line a subject, that means this subject is not going to be in the game at all. I'm not going to bring it up. You're not going to bring it up. It's just, you know, we're just not going to go there. If a subject is veiled, that means we can acknowledge that it happens in the game. Your characters might see signs that it has happened. You might hear reports of it happening. Other characters might say that this situation hap you know, happened to them or uh, they were witness to it, but it is not going to happen on camera and it is not going to happen to our player characters. Um, a third category uh, that has been a sort of a later addendum to the lines and veils thing is called ask first. And those indicate subject matters that you might be okay with engaging in certain circumstances, but you might not be okay in others. So if we want to introduce that subject matter, um, we'll have an out, we'll have a quick out of character discussion just to put some bounds around um, how we want to introduce that subject. Um, I have, we have, a, we're, we are using a shared character keeper um, on the character keeper. I have listed a number of items that um, people will often or that, that, that some people like to line or veil in their games. Um, 
this is a living document. I've got a bunch of blank lines. So if people want to add things that aren't there, that, that is cool. Um, I am now going to pause the recording so we can talk about this a little bit um, and not be. Um, so we can talk about this a little bit and uh, you know, uh, just, just privately with ourselves. Okay, we have established lines and veils. Uh, I've copied them off onto a stick note. So that is now floating on top of all of my other screens. So I will hopefully not take my eye off that ball. The third safety tool that we are gonna play with is called the X card. Uh, the X card is an in the moment reactive tool. Mm -hmm. um, when we use the X card, we are going to pause the game and have a discussion. Um, if you wish to invoke the X card, you can say X card. If you're on camera, you can make an X gesture with your heart, with your hands, um, or if you want to type it in the chat, I'd um, I would ask. Uh, typing in the chat will work, um, although I sometimes I'm not looking at the chat window. So um, if someone has mentioned it in the chat window and I haven't paused, please please bring it to my attention. You use the X card anytime something happens in the game that is making you uncomfortable or that you just don't want to see. Um, when you invoke the X card, we're going to immediately pause the game. Um, the person who invoked the X card lets us know what needs what needs to change. Um, that can be something, you know, major in the game, like you know, you know this is a plot. This is a, a direction I don't want the plot to go in. I'm not interested in going here. It could be something a little more straightforward, like. For example, I've introduced an NPC that has a name that was the name of the bully that used to beat you up when you were in fifth grade and you absolutely hate that name. You know what? This NPC doesn't exist. It, they don't care what we call them. We'll just call them something else. Um, the X card can also be used if anything happens out of the game. For example, if another you, know, you can use the X card to draw attention to other to the behavior of other players. Um, if someone is consistently getting your name wrong or talking over you or is misgendering you, please and please invoke the X card. Um, we'll we'll pause the game and we'll we'll correct that. You know, all adults here will, um, you know, if I'm doing some if I'm if I'm doing something you're that you're finding obnoxious, please let me know and I will do my best to change it. The other thing I like to call out about the X card is if something happens in the game didn't really like, but you decided you're going to let it slide, and then it happens again, you are 100% in your rights to X card something that has happened already because you don't want to see it again. And that's if it's the second or the third or the fifth time that this subject matter has come up, it is absolutely fine to X card something that you let slide before. Any questions about the X card? No. Fantastic. Okay, so that concludes our safety talk. Oh, oh this isn't exactly uh, one one moment on that. This isn't exactly a safety thing, but this is where we should talk about it. Um, if for some reason um, I disappear, or I lose my internet connection, or the or the meeting just abruptly ends, or I look concernedly to my left, take off my headphones, walk off camera. And I don't come back for 10 minutes, assume something has happened to me, um, whether you know I had a power failure or I lost internet or you know um, or you know my cat knocked over a vase from the mantle and I need to clean it up. Um, if I if I if I leave and don't come back for 10 minutes, assume the game is over and you can take the rest of your day back. I wish I could say that's never happened, but it has. I, I have lost internet and um, we've got, uh, in my area, we've got thunderstorms predicted for the next couple of hours. And every once in a while in a thunderstorm, I do lose electricity. And if that happens, I also lose internet. Hopefully that won't happen. Um, I wish I could say it's never happened, but it, it has occasionally. Okay then, um, so quietus. I, I, I have never actually run this game before, so this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. So we're going to go through an exercise to figure out who our characters are and what our situation is. And there is an exercise in the book that I thought I had bookmarked, but I'm not finding it. So 
So let's talk a little bit about the game mechanics. Um, if you want to hop over to the characters tab, um, pretty much every pretty much everything is there. So in Quietist, your characters don't have ability scores. Um, so there's no, you know, you, you don't have ability scores. Um, we do have, uh, we are going to be using a dice pool mechanic. We do have scores though. There's four, there's four tracks that we're tracking for this game. Uh, each character has uh, both a despair track and an anxiety track. There is a common hope track for all characters. And there is also a dread track. The dread track is for the, is for the game master. The other three tracks are for the characters. So, um, so let's first talk about anxiety. Um, the, your anxiety score is your. Um, let me get. Let me let me hop over to the right section here. I like this game. I like the book. It could be better organized. Here we are. So your anxiety measures the player character's panic level. Every character starts at zero and goes up from there. The higher your anxiety score, the more frantically you should play your character. Um, if your anxiety ever reaches 10, your character is now, your character is now panicking. All of your actions are, um, and, and when you are panicking, um, that means that your, uh, that means that your tension level is, uh, is desperate at all, regardless of what's going on, you're desperate because you are, you're at the end of your rope, um, and, uh, you know, you, and you're panicking. Um, and we'll get to that once we get to the um, once we get to the the, the the tension level. So that's your anxiety score. Uh, that pretty much only goes up. There are I think there's a couple of ways to to lower it, but for the most part, you're for the most part you start at zero, and then as the game goes on, that your your anxiety is only going to go up. Your despair rank is how much, uh, it's basically how little hope you have left to go on. Um, despair, both anxiety and despair are tracked on the individual character level. As your despair increases, um, that basically means the amount of, that means you're having a harder and harder time finding the light at the end of the tunnel. And at despair five, that means the horror has gotten your character and your character is out of the game. Generally, that means your character is dead or worse. So at despair five, that is when your character that is uh, when your character hits despair five, that is the end of the road for your character. The game uh, uh, on the flip side, there is a common hope score. And again, when you're um, and again it starts at zero and goes up. And hope means how close you are to getting out of this situation. Um, the game ends when hope gets to five, and that means the game is over and you've gotten your characters out of this bad situation and we'll just go straight to the epilogue. The game is also over when both characters despair hits five, and that means the characters have not, the horror has gotten the characters. So that's, uh, so those are the markers of, of how the game ends. Despair is not hit points. Um, it does not necessarily reflect um, like physical damage or physical trauma. This is how much, how much, you know, like basically how much, how much hope for the future. It's, it's, it's the track on like when the horror gets you. Uh, this game also has conditions, um, which are descriptive. They don't have a direct mechanical impact, but they do have a fictional impact in that if you have, uh, depending on your condition, that may impact your ability to act. Like for example, if you gain the condition, uh, you know, like um, broken leg, that means you like can't run because nobody can run on a broken leg. 
Finally, uh, there is the dread pool. Uh, the dread is a resource used by the GM. Um, there are, depending on, and dread increases for the GM when uh, basically on bad rolls by the PCs. If you if you roll a miss, um, one of the options is the GM can take uh, can take dread points. And dread can go as dread points can go as high as they want. That's a but then once the GM has accrued dread points, I can use those dread points to make your uh, to make the characters' lives more difficult. So I can spend those dread points to do things like um, I can inflict. So I can spend two dread to inflict a consequence on a character. I could spend three dread to inflict a severe consequence. And I can even spend four dread to increase a character's despair rating. Um, but I cannot use I cannot use dread to increase despair to five. That that can only happen through dice rolls. Um, any questions on despair, anxiety, hope, or dread? No. Okay. Not all of those. Currently, but more might come out like as we'll put as we're playing. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm sure it will come up more in play. Um, again, this is the first time I've run this game, so I'm going to be doing a fair amount of reference of referencing the book. Um, in general, those number despair only goes up when dice mechanics tell us that. A character's despair is going up. Usually that means rolling misses on, um, I think that's, your despair pretty much only goes up on rolling misses if the tension level is, uh, if you roll misses, if, um, yeah, if you roll a miss, if the level is tense or desperate, your despair can increase. Um, also, the GM can increase despair by spending dread points. A bit of GM advice is this game works best when your hope and your despair are pretty close to each other. So that that dread point is there to try to basically try to keep those try to keep those pretty close because um, that's the truth because that's the because in this type of horror game uh, when we're looking at the genre things are. Things are most interesting when, you know, things are most as things are most interesting when things look very grim, but there's still a ch there's, but you still got a chance. So I'm going to try to keep those scores pretty close. Uh, the next thing let's talk about is the dice pool. <clears throat> so. Um, So when you are trying to do something difficult and failure has consequence, um, I'll, I'm going to call for a roll. Um, depending on what's going on, the roll is going to be, uh, depending on the current tension level, um, that roll is going to be uneasy, tense, or desperate. Uh, the dice are the same. It's just that the consequences may be more, may be more and more dire as the tension level increases. Um, so whenever you wish to do, and um, like like in every like in Fortune in the Dark, you're going to be uh, you're going to be assembling a pool of I think up to four dice. Um, you're going to roll them all, and we're going to look at the highest the highest individual value on one die. So the more dice you throw, the the more dice you throw, the higher your chances of getting uh, of of getting a success. So a six is generally a full success. A four or a five is usually a success with a complication. And a one, two, or a three is a miss. And that means you, you weren't successful in what you were trying to do. Um, or you succeeded in what you, you you succeeded in what you were trying to do, but you didn't necessarily get what you want. Um, you know, like that's that's the uh, that, that's the Pyrrhic victory option. Um, and the consequences of those roles uh, depend on the on the tension level, and we'll look at that when we actually when we actually roll them. So if things are uneasy or tense or desperate, um, what those numbers mean um, has to have different consequence. But still, a uh, a six is a full success, a four or five is a mitigated success, um, and a one, two, or three is unsuccessful. 
So here's how you acquire dice. Um, when you want to do something, you always get one die. Um, and you can add up to two additional dice by taking the options. Um, so you can push yourself, which means you can increase the tension level. So if the, um, you can accept help from another character that can either be another player character or a, um, uh, or a side care or, or non-player side character. So if you accept help from them, you get another dice. Um, you can work in an element that we've introduced in a, a, via a scar, and we'll talk about scars in a minute. That's, um, that's when we're looking at your character's backstory and some of the trauma and tragedy that has happened to your character in the past. If you invoke a scar, you can get another die. And finally, since this is a two-player game, um, if your character betrays the other character in some way, you can get an extra die in that. Again, emulating genre. Um, sometimes our characters aren't necessarily working together. So you can be rolling up to three dice. Um, if you're only rolling one dice, you really definitely want to like get more than one dice if you can, uh, because rolling a single die really only gives you a 50-50 shot of a success. So, um, so again, you, you, you grab the dice, you roll them, and we're looking at the highest single die. And uh, after the roll, I'll say what the consequences are, and we'll conclude from there. And that's pretty much the game loop. Um, I'll present a challenge. Um, you'll present, you'll tell us how, you how your character meets the challenge. We'll have a die roll, and the, and the result of the die roll will um, you know, we'll either present, we'll generally, we'll get you, either get you out of the situation to move the story forward or put you in a new situation and we'll, and, and, and the loop continues that way. So pushing yourself. Um, if the situation is tense or desperate, um, you can add a die to your pool. Uh, just describe how you're making an extra effort. Um, if you push yourself on a tense roll, um, now, if you push yourself on a tense roll, um, you also you roll another die, and you will add that to your anxiety because you're 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 exerting you're exerting uh, extra effort to do that. So that's that's one of the ways that your anxiety goes up is you can add another die and um, increase your and you can add another die, but that increases your anxiety. Um, if you're desperate and you push yourself. You roll a you roll a die and you add half of that to your anxiety. So when you're already desperate, um, you're already pretty anxious. So that doesn't add quite as much anxiety as when you're not quite all quite there already. Um, if you are accepting help from a side character, um, depending on the tension level. Um, that's going to put the side character at risk, and generally, the uh, and again, the higher the tension level, the higher the chances of a side character helping you will be overcome by the horror. So, in an uneasy roll, if the if the result when the tension is uneasy and a side character is helping on a um, on a one, two, or a three, um, the side character is the the side character is overcome by the by the horror and is now out of the game. On a tense roll, um, they're killed by the horror on a one, two, a three, and they suffered a consequence related to yours on a four, on a four or a five. And when we're desperate, um, the horror is going to get a side character um, it, on on anything other than a six. And that's pretty much the dice mechanic in a nutshell. Another thing that we're going to talk about is called scars. <laughs> Every main character carries scars. Those are painful memories from the past. You can use your pain from the past to overcome the horror. Um, so if you reveal a scar from the past, let me just double check something here. Yeah. So if you work in an element that was, if you work in an element from a scar, um, 
you uh, you narrate a <clears throat> you narrate a flashback that you describe the events from the past as they are relevant now. Um, so the flashback must be from a time when something went very, went horribly wrong for the main character. Um, when you reveal the scar, you do increase your anxiety by two because of these pain, these painful memories. Just quickly reading to make sure I I understand how these go. I'm just going to read the book here. Each main character carries scars painful memories from the past that they use to help them overcome the horror. Generally, players will only describe their what their characters say and do as they react to the world around them, but scars are the exception. They give players the power to narrate their character's background. Scars both build a rich collaborative story and give the main characters a better shot at making it out alive. Scars, uh, the scars told let players introduce helpful side characters or story elements that they can use to gain bonus dice. Story elements, are, story elements are things like weapons, keys, and other objects that give a main character a better chance of overcoming the horror. To reveal a scar, you must tell a melancholy story from your past and, uh, and then introduce an element, a story element or a side character. Uh, the story is a flashback where you describe the events of the past as they're relevant. Um, and most importantly, the flashback must be from a time when something went horribly wrong for the main character. You then raise your anxiety by two uh, because uh, because you are opening up old wounds. So yeah, so you use so when you reveal flashback painful flashbacks from the past, that's when you can introduce side characters now um, or or new story elements that you can use to help you. I think we'll figure out the rest in play. Uh, that's that's pretty much the summary of the rules. Um, do we have any questions before we move on? No questions yeah, at current. No, no. I, I'm sure some will come up during play, and hopefully we'll be able to figure them out by referring to the book. Yeah. So we've gone over the rules elements. We've um, so we've done our introductions. We've done our safety tools. We've gone over the rules elements. Um, I'm looking at the time. It's it's uh, right on the hour. Why don't we take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll figure out our characters and our situation, and then yeah. I think. And then from that, we'll uh, we'll start play. Let's take 10 minutes. Let's come back at 10 minutes past yeah, the hour. Yeah, OK. Perfect. Bye. See you. 10. OK, we're back. Um, so let's let's create our let's create our scenario and our characters. So let me hop back over here. So I'm going to just gonna, I'm just going to make some general notes about our scenario in this free parking <laughs> section of the character keeper. Okay. So we're going to create this scenario together, um, and then we're going to also figure out who our characters are. So again, this this game ten this game is intended to emulate those games of the is there to emulate horror movies where the you know the characters are generally separated in some kind of isolated area, and so they have to deal with horror on their own. I mean, it's not a situation where you can just pick up the phone, and call the cops. Um, or like, or shout and have a whole lot of people come in to help you. So um, there's, uh, there are a set of scenario creation questions here and we're gonna figure these out as a group of the three of us together. So the first question is, you are someplace isolated. Where, what is this place? So this is where we can, this is where we're gonna figure out. So, I mean, this is one, I mean, are you like, lost in the woods somewhere? Are you down a lonely, did you take a wrong turn and you're down a lonely country road? Um, are you on an abandoned, are you on a subway platform in the middle of the night and there's nobody around? You know, is it, are, 
you're the only guests in a hotel. Is it possible that we could be um, somewhere familiar? It's just the situation is unfamiliar. You know, like you're in your house, except all the power has gone out. That is absolutely uh, that, that is absolutely absolutely genre appropriate. Now a little bit about the scenario. We're gonna have I'm gonna have like all of us together. We're going to create the scenario and we're gonna figure out the characters and a little bit of backstory about what why we're in this situation. <clears throat> the horror elements are entirely up to me, and the the rules say that I should be introducing things that are um, I should introduce horrors that are kind of unexpected. Um, um, it says here in the book, the horror, whenever possible, should come as a surprise to both the characters and the players. The unknown makes every decision uneasy and making the players and characters uneasy or even outright scared within the boundaries of our safety tools is part of the game. So we're gonna create, so as a group, we're gonna create our, we're gonna create our situation, backstory and characters. I'm going to figure out what kind of horror is, is stalking or stalking or haunting you. I mean, it could be something as simple as, um, you know, it could be something something as simple as, um, as as a masked man with an axe, or it could be like like actual ghosts. We'll figure it out. Okay. So, um, um, so, so Kavya, you suggested um, you're you're in your house, you're in your house, but there's a power outage. That that sounds cool. Mona, do you have any suggestions or? Yeah, conditions? I'm thinking maybe there's a there's some kind of bad weather going on, so it's not easy to get help even from neighbors. Do we have neighbors? I I mean, like I imagine it's like the countryside and where like the houses are pretty far apart. But like on a good day, you can probably call them and like they might show up eventually. But I'm thinking there's some kind of weather condition that uh, for one, we don't have power. For a second, the weather makes it like, they probably won't come for Impossible. you. And even if, yeah, even if they do, they might like die on the road. So, so, you, you can't count down them coming, even if you are like very friendly with them. That is kind of the direction I was leaning towards. So yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay, so you are, you're in your, you're in your own home. Power is out. Bad weather. Um, countryside home. Important yeah, country, point. yeah, in your country home, countryside home. And the neighbors. Nearest houses are pretty far. Are fairly far apart. Um, I like it. Um, I, I I like it. Oh, and if and of course it has to be night. Obviously. Night, night power out, bad weather. Love it. Classic. Um, let's do a so I guess. I just want to talk a little bit more about the house, um, just to get an idea of, um, just get a little, just to get an, uh, just get a little more idea about like, like how big, how big is this house? What might be some of the resources that might be in the house? Which I guess is a question of like, how well off are you? I mean, is this is this is a big country estate. Is it a, is you know, is it a little cabin in the woods? Some, you know, are you? Is it just? Are you like? Upper middle class in the exurbs. I, I have a suggestion. It's a, it's a like small like truck stop store. That's also a house, our home. 
Oh, so like the stalls on the ground floor, and then we're like living above yeah. it. Yeah, 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 and it's like where like like people drive by will stop by to get like some food or drink or like make a call. Maybe there is also a gas station and like so you know it's that kind of thing that you see on like mm-hmm. big country, like a big nation and like on like the long roads there are these kind of sites. Oh yeah, I know. Totally. I, oh yeah, I love it. I love it. So, uh, if you if you're into that, yeah, I love it. You're a, uh, yeah, you're an isolated. You're you're a gas Truck station stop in, business. Yeah, yeah. Your uh, the house is so location. Yeah, so it's not a small house, but a lot of it are things like storage and storefront and <sighs> like things like that. Not living quarters. Mm-hmm. So it's actually it's not so much a house, but it's like an isolated gas station and convenience store on a rural highway. Yeah, yeah that we just happen to live in. Oh, I'm gonna say an isolated mom and pop. Isolated mom and pop gas station, because that means you probably own this place with um, highway. I uh, will say apartments. Your apartments are above the storefront. Yeah, or yeah. Your, your home is home is. Let uh, make okay. sense. Yeah. I love it. Is it just a gas station convenience store or do you do actual repairs there? Because again, this is gonna, you know, I mean, do you have a do you have a like do you have like a mechanics garage? Some some of these places do, some don't. I just just want to get an idea of like what what resources we all might have and also what places I could have horrors hide. Mm-hmm. Maybe just uh, enough to do like um, you know, refill tires. Yeah, yeah. I uh, like yeah. like Tire service oil change. You can do like tire service yeah. oil changes, but not like heavy. Do- but but you're not, not like gonna- actual repairs. Yeah. Yeah, Got yeah. it. Yeah, you're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna rebuild somebody's transmission here. Got it. Yeah. No. Got a maintenance garage, but not a major repair center. Okay, love it. Okay, I think that's our situation. Uh, this also kind of goes to why are you in such an isolated place? Well, yeah. You know, I mean, it's a, can you know, it's. You know, it's it our business. Yeah, it's your yeah. business. It's your business. That's where, that's where it is. It's on a, you know, it's. During the day, it's not a bad place to be in business because you know it's your it's it's a rural it's a rural highway and it's also convenient for you. There aren't a lot of other gas stations or repair centers around, so if people if people need gas, they're going to come to you. They're going to stop by. And to tie this in with the idea that we do have neighbors, they just can't. They're just really far. Maybe it's like yeah. it's a small like yeah. rural town, and we're at the edge of it, like at the outskirts, and then the town is like further in. I love it. Uh, located on the edge of a small town. Okay, so we have our we have our we have our location. I love it. Just do a quick. There we go. So put a separator bar there. Um, okay, so we're gonna do. So that's the location. 
So we're going to do now, we're going to do our characters. <clears throat> okay, so my next question is, so what what are the relationship between our two care between our two main characters? I'm thinking siblings. Sure, because I had no idea that sounds great. Yeah, I imagine like we inherited this store from our parents or something. Which makes sense why we're here. It's not something we decided. It's just family business. Love it. You inherited it from your parents. Oh, okay. This sounds this sounds good. Um, because that sets up because you know because you're because this sets up um, family history. It also sets up um, like family tension. It also sets up the possibility that what happened to your parents? That's something that we can conceivably explore in backstory when we introduce scars. What was your relationship with the parents? If that was rocky, that could also be a source of that could also be a source of scarring um, that you can draw you can draw from. So yeah, that's siblings who have inherited the business from their parents. I love it. This is this is great. Which and this segues into the next question, uh, which is why does it pain you to be here? I mean, it's memories, right? Like either we have bad Go memories on. about this place or like we have good memories about this place. Or you always I wanted think to- I we have, sorry. Oh, uh, no, um, no, no, please. I was, I was just gonna, I was just gonna throw another prompting question, but if you've got an idea, please, please, please. Mm -hmm. I do. I think we have bittersweet memories of this place because um, I think most like familiar relationships when there's some this kind of inheritance thing is that kind of bittersweet thing or familial relationships in general. And um, also we kind of dreamed like when we were growing up, we kind of dreamed of like getting out of this small town and going somewhere, making something of ourselves. But now we have to uphold this family legacy yeah because no one else is going to do it Dreams of getting away and doing something else, but obligation has kept you here. Love it. And we can explore what those obligations are in play, but I love that. So I guess now the question is, um, who are, um, so if we wanna scroll up, who are our characters? Um, like what are their, like what are their names? What do they look like? How old are they? We can figure out names later. Or actually that's the, uh, yeah. So who are, who are, who are our characters? Like, you know, what do you look like? <clears throat> How old are you? What do you look like? And what's your name? Obviously this is uh, something. Okay. Yeah, young -ish, uh, adults, I think, 20 to 30 something. That range. Let me just do something. I notice there's no layer, there's no line here for 
for player info. So let me do a. Uh, there's miscellaneous notes, so we can just put it on. Yeah, well, I was just, I, yeah. I like to put that at the top so I can. Uh, so there's... I'm just going to do an insert cells and shift down. There also, Mona, do you want to be like age separated siblings or actually like fraternal slash identical twins? Yeah, I think uh, we are probably not paternal twins, but I think our age difference isn't big. Like maybe a few years. Small gap, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Okay, just put a, just put a player line in here. Oh, also, would you like to be older or younger? Yeah, Ela is fine with me. Okay, I'm gonna roll a d6. <laughs> and uh, even your older odd I am. That is a one. We're starting off strong with the luck today, but um, I guess that makes me older. Which of you wish to be, uh, which of you wish to be player one, character one, and which do you wish, to, oh, okay. Thank you, Mona. Yeah, I'll read. Yeah. Yep, thanks. I was gonna ask the same thing. What if I moved this candle so it wasn't under my arm? People are hard. So, Mona, so, you're, so if you are the younger sibling and your older sibling is in their mid twenties, I guess that would put you in the in your early twenties. Early twenties. Yeah. If that's all right. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, I, I love your, uh, Kavya, I love the, love the description. Ponytail, you're always, you're always redoing. Nervous habit of tugging on or braiding her own hair. Love it. Thank you. So yeah, just a couple of, uh, yeah, just like a couple of personality or um, like, yeah, just a couple of like quick personality things that would be, you know, somewhat visually distinctive for you know, if this were a movie, something that would distinguish your character. And I like, I like, um, yeah, Kavya, I, I love what you've done there so far. Thank you. Just get a name going.
Hey, I'm stepping off camera for just a moment, but keep going. I'll be back in like, uh, I'll be back in a minute or less. Yeah, sure okay. Thing. And had I been smarter earlier, I would have paused the recording while we were doing all this because uh, this is going to be really boring viewing. So I'm going to pause the recording now, and then when we come back, and then once we out once, later, yeah, I'll, if I have time to edit the video, I'll, I'll cut this. I'll cut this like long section out, and if not, I'll just I'll just I'll just mark it under time markings because I'm I'm not great with video editing. I usually just put these recordings up more or less unedited. But I'm going to pause it here, and then we'll come back once we have our characters and scenario all set. Okay, we are back. We have established a scenario. We have established and we've established our characters and we've gotten a little bit of backstory that we have developed um, in this. So let's, um, so let us first introduce our characters. Um, Kavya, would you like to go first? Sure thing. Um, so I am Lorelai Lorems, the elder sister. Um, I'm in my mid twenties, I have this ponytail that I'm always tightening or redoing, and I have a nervous habit of tugging on slash rebraiding and unbraiding my own hair. Um, I have a bittersweet relationship with everything and everyone here, because well, that's how these things work. Um, I dress look put together, but you can tell that my clothes are showing signs of being old. I'm doing my best, but. Clearly, we're not as well off as we pretend. And I'm doing my best to be positive, but something always slips through. Mona, would you introduce us to Ashley? Yeah, so I'm Ashley Lawrence. She, her, uh, I'm the younger sister. I'm in my early 20s, only a few years younger than Lorelai. And so I'm like still stuck in my emo phase and I'm too young for this whole family business bullshit. But I actually care about people around me deeply. I just don't express myself very well. And my look is, I have long unkempt hair and I always stress this in clothes of black or white. So the scenario that we have <clears throat> developed through asking through, through answering a bunch of story prompts is so the location that this is so the location this is going to set be set in is a family business that um, Ashley and Lorelei co-own. It's a um, it's a gas station basically it's a gas station and convenience store that has a small maintenance garage. Um, on a rural highway, uh, a, a few miles outside of a small town. <clears throat> um, the um, you know it's so it's you know, it, it's a gas station, it's a convenience store, and then they and then the sisters live in um, they, they they live in an apart they, they live in uh, they live in a home that is above the convenience store. Um, it's kind of isolated. There aren't really a lot of neighbors here, uh, but under normal circumstances, this is a, it's great because it's the only gas station for miles in either direction. So if people need gas, they're gonna stop here. <clears throat> um, let's see. However, it is night. 
Uh, it is nighttime now, and there is a huge band of thunderstorms that are that are raging. And um, I think our I think our scene is going to open. Um, you know, like I'm going to say, the convenience store is open, lights are on. Um, pretty late at night. Let's say it's like <clears throat> let's say it's like 10:30 at night. Um, is your do you run this place 24 seven or do you just, or do you shut it down at a certain time? If you do have, to, if, if it is 24 seven, you, you probably have a, you probably have a, you probably are gonna have to have a couple of employees to run it because. Two people might, on the clock is insane. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's 24 seven. But I think we stay open till at least like midnight or 1 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say it's getting close to closing time. Um, <clears throat> let's say you stay open till midnight, and it's about 11:30 at night. And again, it's it's dark. It's wind is really kicked up. The rain is coming down. Um, there's like flashes of lightning. There's flashes of lightning and thunder, but it's still a little distant. It's not it's not it's not striking really close yet. But you can tell as the uh, you can tell as time goes on that like the center of the storm is moving toward you. <clears throat> um, you know, lights are on, everything is, everything seems pretty normal, pretty normal for an evening. Let's, let's, uh, let, let's have an, let's have an establishing scene. Um, if you want to have it like in the actual convenience store, and I'm going to say there's, there's no customers in the store. There's no one that's pulled up. You are, you are still technically open, but there, but it's just the two of you. I think we're in the convenience store still, though. Yeah. yeah. So who would be like manning the register, the counter? Feel like that would be me. People yeah, react so, uh... better too. <laughs> yeah. So no. I think I I would be like checking on the like inventory and, and stuff on the shelves and complaining about things that I think have found missing and probably stolen, but maybe I just didn't count them right, who knows. I love it. Or or maybe maybe Ashley you've got maybe you've maybe you've got the dry mop and you're like cleaning the aisles because you're getting ready to shut down for the day. Yeah. Um, you're the only two in the store, so if you want to talk about personal stuff like the letter you got yesterday, that now might now might be the time. I think we don't open with that. I think we're kind of tiptoeing around it because we did have a big argument about it yesterday. So I think yeah. I'm just going to hesitantly be like, you know, if um we could close up early tonight, I don't think anyone else is coming. Yeah, I think. I think we have one of those like small television like near the counter and, and it's like it, it's probably on news channel all the time. So I look at like the like the weather report and I say, oh I would say like who would be driving into this middle of nowhere in this weather. Someone would say enough that shouldn't be that we probably shouldn't allow in here. Yeah, and, and there's a and and the camera like goes over like like looks at the the camera of of this scene is like like lingers on the t lingers on the TV screen and it's like weather alert tornado weather alert uh weather alert tri state area um <clears throat> uh tornado at tornado advisory in effect and it's got like the Doppler radar and it just shows this like big this like massive band of like like green and yellow and red thunderstorms, um, you know, that's like moving toward the center. I mean, we don't know exactly where you are on this, where you are on this map, but yeah, it's clearly establishing that there's this massive, there's this like big massive storm system that's moving through. I think I'm gonna move and like flip the sign. I'll just say, yeah, I think we can um, call it a night, call it a night, it's been a long, couple of days yeah i think i'm going to go get the keys and lock up and everything 
So as you turn the light off, um, you know, like like I, I I'm 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 seeing that you've got like a big old fat like you've got like a big like like blue and red neon sign that's you know that says open, and you you flip that off. And then you flip the you flip the little lights on, and like I, you know, you got one, you got like one of those like lit signs that say you know like Pepsi or, um, and as you turn the second one off, like simultaneously, all of the lights go off. Uh, oh, I'm gonna say as you turn that. Oh, even better, you turn that off, and that's when there's this massive flash of lightning, a big boom of thunder. And all of the lights go off, including the TV. Like you've just you've just lost power. Of all the places to set up, why did it have to be in the middle of nowhere? Don't even have a generator. Yeah, I I think I was like asking, hey sis, did you shut out? Like, did you shut off the main power, or is it what I think it is? Yeah, it's another one of those storm things. I thought after last month we wouldn't have this problem again, but here we are. And I'm going to pull out my phone and like try to turn on the flashlight. Got it. So yeah, you turn on the flashlight apps of your phone. Um, I mean, hey, you're in a convenience store. You probably, I mean, you probably sell flashlights. So if you don't have any under the desk, you'd probably pull one off the shelf. I think we have like a little, we have a couple like stashed throughout the building. Yeah. Um, we never know when this will happen. I think I'm checking my cell phone just to make sure there's no signal. Um, there's signal. You, you. Oh, yeah, oh okay. I was gonna say, you've, I was gonna say, yeah, you've, you've got, you've got, well, you've got cellular signal. Um, according to your phone, which you don't have is Wi-Fi because your yeah, yeah, Wi-Fi yeah. router doesn't have power right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like, but you know, one thing that's weird is normally, you, normally, you know, you're not too far from a tower. Normally, you have like three or four bars. You've only got two bars. Yeah, I think I said, oh damn it! I think, I think it might have hit the cell tower too, and I, I think I show the red light my phone and say, look, only two bars. I look at my phone and I see that I only have one and I'm like, well, hopefully the landline's working. I mean, things can't be that bad, right? I think I'm going to like yeah. go to the landline and actually try to dial up um, Gadget. The landline is working. Um, so whatever has taken out the power hasn't taken out your phone line. Um, so yeah, you pick up the phone and you call, gad and you call Gadget's shop. Um, you know, you know, you, you call your old friendly friend, uh, you know, Gadget Garfield, who owns Garfield, who owns uh, Garfield's uh, Gar Garfield's Pearson maintenance garage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone's called him Gadget forever. Um, and you give him a call and. Well, first you call his first you call his shop line and it just kind of and his shop line like rings three times and, and goes to voicemail. Then you call. Then you call his like personal cell phone. His personal cell phone also goes to voicemail. And then you call the landline in his in his house. That's you know behind the that his house is like behind his shop. And his landline just rings and rings and rings and rings and nobody picks up. I think I call the um his personal phone again and I. And this time I do leave a voicemail. I'm like, hey, it's Lorelai. Um, call me when you get this. There's a weather advisory and I just wanted to check and make sure everything's okay. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm like trying to like make sure that the freezer are all closed well so that like the cold food won't go bad and stuff like that. Like the remnants of cold stays. Yeah. And I think I said, well, we can definitely call it a night because 
Even if someone does come, we don't. We can't really do anything for them. Yeah. Yep. And I think we're gonna like head out of the store and into like upstairs to our like domicile. Got it. So as you're, um, so as you are um, like finally like closing up the shop, you're taking, you're making sure that your freezers are closed and tightly shut so that, you know, nothing's going to melt. Nothing's going to, because, you know, the power is going to be back on in an hour or two because, well, you know, it's never out for much longer than that. Um, so you make sure like, you know, your, your ice cream and your ice cream and like Stouffer's frozen dinners um, aren't, aren't going to melt. So as you're, as you're like, as you're uh, like closing everything up and you've locked the, you've locked the front um, and you're about to go out the back to go, you're about to go up the stair, up, up the back entrance. Um, and like, I want to say, so there's, there's a back entrance um, that goes out uh, you know, to basically the back of your shop. Um, I want to say that, you know, there's a door that goes out, but there's also a stairway that goes up to your apartment there. And as you're, and as you are like walked from the actual convenience store to that little, that little, like, like, like that little, like access room, I'm kind of imagining, you know, there's, I'm, I'm kind of imagining there's like, like, you know, there's like a, there's like a mostly glass door and, um, and then there's the stairs that go up. When you get in there, you hear some, you hear like some clanking of like metal on metal and it's coming from the, it's coming from your like little maintenance garage next door. And that's weird. There shouldn't be anybody making that kind of noise. It's like clank, clank, it's like clank, clank, clank. And then you hear like another distant rumble of thunder. What do you do? Ashley, are we sure we locked up the garage? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not like we don't have a lot of people needing maintenance today. I guess. Um, how about you go upstairs and um just go inside, maybe put on a cup of tea or something? I'll just I'm just gonna go make sure that everything's all right and I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so actually goes up the stairs and um, Lorelei, you, um, are you going outside and back in or I'm gonna, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a, uh, well, would there be? No, I don't think there, I don't necessarily I don't think, think- there's a connection. I, I don't think, think like there'd be a connected door. You, had, a, you have to, yeah, I yeah. think you have to like leave the building and then come in. Okay, yeah, so you open I the- I think I grab the flashlight from under the desk before I go. What kind of flashlight is it? Is it a simple little plastic one or is it like one of those big, one of those like, like a big like, cop style mag light I just want to or, or are you just using the or using the flashlight function of your smartphone what, what kind of light do you have uh, so I put my phone away because I want to like conserve that charge so I grab so it's one of those um about yay big and um it's not super powerful it's not anything like heavy duty but it's sturdy and it does give me enough light to like you know okay so it's like a I mean so it's like a plastic so it's like a plastic simple flashlight that you'd buy at a convenience store mostly made of plastic takes two like, takes two d cells okay just wanted to make sure i mean if you wanted to say you had like a you know like one of those big cop mag lights that made of metal but i, I like the i like the plastic idea yeah so okay we so probably you have like one heavy duty flashlight but we keep it upstairs sounds good to me Okay, so you open the door, and um, the moment you open the door, you're just like there's this massive gust of massive gust of wind that uh, that goes by, and it's really raining hard. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you you go outside and you go around to the before I do this. <laughs> oh, love it, rain poncho, love it. And yeah, you go around back and. Um, the back door, like not the garage door, but the back door to like the little office in the, um, to like the little office that's attached to the, the maintenance garage, that back door is open. It's like, it's like a jar. And now that you're looking at it, um, the window, the glass window is broken. 
and the door is and the door is open. You hear another clank from inside the garage. Now, as much as I want to react with suspicion, if I want to be a character, I cannot. So um, I'm going to, I'm not going to go any closer, but I am going to kind of call out, hey, this is private property. You can't be in here. To that, you hear, uh, you hear no response. Is the glass broken from the outside or the inside? The glass is broken from the outside as if, and, and if you shine your light in there, um, there is a literal old fashioned red brick that was tossed through the window. The brick is on the floor and there's like kind of glass, there's kind of glass everywhere. And um, some of the paper, and at this point, like a number of the papers that were, I'm getting the feeling that, you know, maybe you're not, that some of the papers that were uh, like, you know, like the papers and receipts or whatnot that were on the desk uh, in the little office, they're like getting blown around a little bit by the, by the wind from this storm. And yeah, there's like water starting to pool on the floor that's coming in from the rain. Um, I'm going to enter and like go towards the office, but as I do, so I'm still going to continue calling out. I'm going to be like, I don't think any of us want to get the cops involved in this weather. If you just leave it's fine you don't even have to pay for the window or anything again you don't hear anything um so i think so what's so i the, what i'm imagining is there's this you know it's like a it's like the little office um that's connected to the garage i think there's probably there's probably like 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 a window like like a glass interior window that looks into the garage itself what and what else go ahead and go ahead and paint that scene what is it what does it look like and how can you tell that's and what is telling you that someone was in here there's obviously the brick and the papers being all fussy um I can't think of anything past the signs we've already been given that there's that clanking noise and there's this brick and this is clearly a man-made problem. Um, as for what it looks like, I think um, there's like this filing cabinet in which you keep the more important paperwork. And then there's the desk in which, um, you know, receipts and the like. And normally we'd put away things before we like closed up, but yesterday was like really bad for both of us. So paperwork is just on the desk. Um, there's probably some kind of tarp or whatever spare in case the window gets blown in or whatever. Um, inside the actual garage, we have um, one of those machine things that you um, use to pump air into the tires. We have um, small, we have not small, we have a normal car jack and um, tools to small toolkit that you can use to switch out tires and anything I'm forgetting, Mona? Yeah, no, not not over the top of my head. And is there, uh, was there a car in the garage? Or oh, right. Would the baby, or would the baby empty? Do we have a car ourselves? I'm sure you have a car. I'm guessing it probably, I mean, if you want to establish that you have a second garage that, I mean, like not a repair garage and actually just a straight up garage where you park your own car, you can say that. Or if you want to say that, I mean, you absolutely have, have your own car. Um, I mean, if you want to establish that both of you each have your own car, that would also be fine. Um, and you can tell, you can tell me where, where you have left them, where they, where they normally park, whether that's in a separate, whether it's in a separate garage, that's just for parking your own vehicles, or if you just leave them, or if you just leave them like out in the parking lot or behind your or behind, like go go ahead and I establish that. Have, I think we only have one vehicle between the two of us because as we've established, we're not doing too well. So you yeah. know, we have the family business, we have the family vehicle, we have the family domicile. Um, I don't know about where we leave it at all. And you know, would there be would there be like a customer's car that would be 
that would, for whatever reason, have been in here overnight, or would the bay, have, or should the bay be empty? Yeah, I feel like I maybe they... maybe we usually park the like our family car outside, but today because of the weather, we are parking it in the maintenance garage. And that's the only car in the bay because we don't have any overnight. Yeah, got it. We don't oh, I like do that. It. I like that. You know, maybe you move the car. Maybe you norm. Maybe you normally keep your car in here overnight, but during the day you move it out so that if you need to work on a work on a customer's car, you can do that. I like that. I like that. So your car, your car is in is in the garage. I like it. <clears throat> okay. So Lurle, you um. So yeah, I, I see your like you're like looking around the office. Someone's clearly been in there. Someone has clearly gone through the desk. Um, and I'm going to say there's like an inter interior door that opens from the office into the, into the garage bay. And that door was also ajar. And again, you normally keep that closed. Um, are you stepping into the garage bay? And, uh, Kiva, you, oh, uh, Kavya, you sorry, suddenly went muted. muted. Yeah, I. I was muted, yeah. Um, no, I was going to say, I'm not going to step in. What I'm going to do is, uh, is it feasible to say that we have a landline in this office? Absolutely. You know, we call them, um, yeah. So I'm going to use that landline to um, try to call our local county sheriff people. Okay. Hey, pick up the phone. I mean, you can call 911. That'll, uh... and yeah, the, yeah, the dispatcher, dispatcher picks up. 911, what is your emergency? Um... We live on the outskirts of town. Someone's broken in, and um, it's I ha I. It's just me and my sister out here. We can't take care of this. The, the dispatcher asks, um, "Is there is it? Do you have an intruder in your proper in your premises now?" I think so. Um. The dispatcher tells you to um, move yourself to a safe place, and they are dis they are dispatching a they're dispatching a deputy as soon as possible. Uh, they do say that, given weather conditions, it might be ten or fifteen minutes before they could get there. But keep yourself safe, and if you but keep yourself safe, um, and if you can, call us back. But we'll have we'll have. Yes. We'll have a, but we'll have a deputy there in, in, we'll have a deputy there in like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. I, you know, I'm just gonna hang up. I'm gonna close, I'm, I'm just gonna leave the garage because I'm yeah. not particularly strong for my age, size, whatever. So I, I'm not confident in my ability to fight. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make doubly sure to lock every single door behind me and um, go back upstairs to Ashley. Okay. Yeah, so I think, I think I was making tea and I was cutting lemon because, yeah, I, I like lemon tea. And I ask, and when I see Lorella, I ask, so, so what's up? It, it took you a oh, while. It's before, before we get, uh, yeah. before, before we get that, let's have, let's have the scene of, of Ashley in, Ashley in your home. And so you go up. So you've gone upstairs to make some tea, and um, as you get upstairs, um, you 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 notice that the you know you notice that the window you notice that there was a window open, and that the and that the wind and the rain is is kind of like blowing in. I'm like like the, um, the the window in like the in like the living room was open, and the and the rain is blowing in, and you're thinking to yourself, well, that's well. And, and you think to yourself something along the lines of, oh, well, why would, why would Lorelei have left this window open? That was dumb of her. So you just kind of, just kind of casually close the window. Then you go off and make your tea. But yeah, there's a, there's a, as you walk upstairs, yeah, you notice the window was open and the, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the, the, cur the curtains are blowing and there's like, there's like rain coming in. Uh, anything else you do before you before you make some tea? Yeah, no, I don't think I, I'll. Obviously, I will turn the light. Oh no, there's no light. I think I will. 
Yeah, I think I would light some candles, maybe like just to get some light. Or maybe I will put up like one big flashlight, like on a table or something. Okay. Um, hey, I, 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 um, I'm, I'm really sorry. I need to pause for just a moment. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be back in like two minutes. Uh, so, sorry about that. Hold, yeah, no hold on, just hold on, just a moment. I'm gonna pause this no and I'll be right back. Okay, so Ashley, you are upstairs. Um, you know, you kind of, you know, instinctually like hit the light switch and nothing comes on because there's a power failure. Um, but you know, you've got, yeah, you know, but you've got propane, so um, you know your stove, your stove top should still work. Um, and so you go into the kitchen to start some tea. Um, you you you, uh, you know, like light the flashlight, and as you turn and as you um say so you light a you light a candle in the kitchen and as you turn to as you turn to um set the candle set the candlestick on like the table to illuminate there is somebody else in the room with you um there is a person dressed all in black, save for a bright yellow. He's wearing a whoever it is is wearing just like a bright yellow, like kid's mask. It's a round mask that's just got two black eyes and a smile. What do you do? And um, so you turn, you see him in your, you see this person in your kitchen, um, and then we cut back over to Lorelei. Um, so you were just, so you were just, uh, close, so you were just closing up the, so you said you were going to close the garage, go back inside and, um, lock, lock the door. Lock door behind me, yeah. Got it. <clears throat> so I'm going to say what, ha so, um, yeah, so you have just, so I think you've locked the, so you're now in that, in that little room I described earlier that had the, that, that goes outside and then with the stairs going up and you're just locking that. And I think you're, I think from here, you're going to hear whatever, whatever reaction Ashley made to the, uh, to, to the reveal, I, to the reveal. So we're going to cut back, we're going to cut back upstairs to Ashley. Um, there's a man standing in your kitchen wearing all black, except for a yellow happy face mask. What do you do? I'm in the kitchen, right? I, I, I didn't quite get what you said. Could you repeat? I'm in the kitchen, right? You are in the kitchen, yes. So I grab a, like a kitchen knife and I point it at them and I say, who the, uh, I don't care who the hell are you, get out, get out of our house. Um, the person wearing a, the, uh, you know, happy, Happy face mask um, raises, uh, you know, like raises an axe in one hand and takes and starts and starts moving towards you. What do you do? Yeah, I think I'm going to back away, but I, I'm going to back away facing then. And I still hold the knife. So you're holding the knife up. You're you're like, back. You're and yeah. you're you're like, okay. And you and you're backing and you're backing away. Do you do you like? Okay. So, Lorelei, you have heard Ashley upstairs say something like, uh, "What did you say? Like, who are you? Get out of my house! Get the hell out of my house!" Uh, you hear that? You you hear Ashley say that from upstairs? Uh, what do you do? I'm going to run up the stairs, like okay. locking the door behind me, forgotten if I haven't already, just run. Okay, you run up the stairs, close the door behind you, um, quickly, quickly hit the lock, and um, yeah, you get into the, you like, I, I think you, I think you can probably hear her, hear Ashley, uh, like, continuing to tell this guy to like get out and it's coming from the kitchen and sure enough uh there's Ashley backed against the wall and there is a there is a person clad all in black except for like a 
plastic happy face mask, but he's got like a fireman's axe and he's like, he's like raised it as if he's about to swing at your sister. What do you do? And you're muted again. I keep mixing up the mute and unmute side. Um, two things. Yeah. I am A, going to kind of yell, hey, clown wannabe, stay away from my sister. And then whether they turn or not, I'm going to take the flashlight I'm holding and hurl it straight at them. OK, you're going to throw the flashlight at him. OK, um, uh -huh. I think um, I think I think we've I think we've gone straight to a I I think we've gone straight to a tense roll here. Um, let me let me just double check to make sure I've got this. Um, I just want to make sure I got the mechanics right. Give me just a moment to look this up. Nice. Attention. You know, I think I've, I think I've, I think I've escalated this pretty close. So I think, I, I think honestly, uh, since we've got a, since we've got a, 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 I've just suddenly revealed a killer here, um, who's got an axe, who is threatening your sister. I think we've gone straight to desperate here, which is the consequence is if the role fails, the main character will suffer a severe consequence and, and, and attract the horror's attention. You've already attracted the horror's attention because he's right there. So I think we've gone just straight to desperate. Mm -hmm. I think we've gone straight to desperate here. So, um, if you want to roll actual dice, uh, that's cool. If not, I if on the I safety and resource you got you got dice, perfect. If not, I've I've got a dice roller linked from the safety and resources tab. If you, but if you prefer to roll physical dice, that is absolutely cool. So let's so we've got our first roll of the game, and it's desperate. So let's um. So you get one die. So let's let's talk about dice. Um, so we get one die. You get one die for um. You got one die doing for doing that. it. You can take up to two additional dice. Um, so we're on a desperate roll. So you can choose to push yourself um, and just take a second die. <clears throat> if you do that, that's I going to much well. got it. So that is going to add that is going to add some points to your anxiety by doing that. Um, but we'll we'll do that after we resolve the roll. Um, you can also accept help from another character. Although, if the other character helps, they're they're also putting themselves in danger. Ashley, are you going? To, are you going to help here? And if so, I how? Mean, yeah, I'm thinking because I feel like if I help, it would be like me doing the thing. So like, you know, I mean, you could conceivably distract, you could duck, you could try to like, you know, I don't know, you know throw something else at this guy. Um, like, what, what do you want to do to try to help? Because you know, your sister, you know, your sister's there because she's, she screamed and she's also throwing the flashlight at him. Yeah, I'm not sure throwing both of our light sources is a good idea. So what if we didn't? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw the, the candle at Len. Throw the candle at him. Yeah. Nice. We're going to burn down the family business. Love <laughs> it. Okay, that throws that 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 has a whole lot of complications that I could that I could use. Okay, so um, so Lurley, you are you are uh, you are rolling uh, you are rolling three dice, uh, but yeah. this is this is a desperate roll. And what's the uh, high number? Six, five, six. You got a six. Perfect. Um, so while we are uh, while we're st still doing this, roll another d six. Mm -hmm. Five. Five. Okay. Um, so please add. Um, uh, please increase your anxiety to three. So that's half of the. <clears throat> So um, up, basically, um, wait, was it a half? Um, the way it works is a one or a two raises by one, a three or a four raises by two, a five or six raises by three. 
So yeah, we're Focus we're rounding around. so we're rounding up. <clears throat> so we got a six on the die. So the result for that is <clears throat> on a on a six on a on a desperate roll, the character achieves a stated goal and the GM takes one dread. <clears throat> Um, you hit him square in the you hit him square in the face. So the uh, and so the desired effect is that he doesn't take he doesn't take the swing at your he doesn't take the swing at your sister. Um, but you no longer have a flashlight. Um, it's you, you hit him like square in the face, and he he reels a moment. So you both have a chance to you you both have an you both have a moment to do something. Um, Ashley, what are you doing? I'm going to stab stab Len. I'm going to try to stab Len. Oh, you're going to you're going to try to stab him. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, oh, and I'm also I'm also going to say because that was a six, that candle like a candle lands on the floor and just snuffs out. So, um, no no fires were started now, but yeah, you're 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 going yeah. to you're going to straight up stab this guy. Okay. Um, let's talk about your dice. You got one die for doing it. Uh, this also, this is clearly, uh, tension is clearly desperate as well. Um, <clears throat> um, let's see. So let's talk dice. So you get one die for doing it. Um, if you would like, again, if you would like to push yourself, you can take another, you can take another die. Do you wish oh, to push yourself? Uh should I get one anxiety for helping as uh, helping Loreline? Well, this is a new. If you're stabbing him, that's um, that that's no, no, a, that's I mean, a, no the candle I mean, earlier for for the earlier role because it says main character helping adds one anxiety faces a rose consequences. Hold on, uh, I just want to make sure I'm doing this. Um, side character helping consequence. Yeah, you're not a side character, you're a main character. Yeah, no, no, it, it says That's main character anxiety. helping adds one anxiety and faces the rules consequences. Yep, um, it does face the rules consequences. Um, however, the consequence was a six. So there, there, there were no, so that was a full success. So there were no and, there were no addition there were no additional consequences to Laurel's so, row. So is the adds one anxiety only happen if it's like below a six, oh. or is that just? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, you do add. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you do add one anxiety. I missed that. Thank you. Yeah yeah. Because like in in yep. Fortune of Dark game, this kind of thing usually have a, at least a little cost. Yep. So. Yep. No, you you are absolutely correct. I I you are absolutely correct. Yes. Taking a, like I said, I've never run this game before, so. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so I have one dive and push gets plus done. And so you've got one die. It. If you're pushing yourself, that that gives that'll give you two dice. Um, can 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 Lorella help me in any way? So the um, yeah, so your intruder it was was very was momentarily distracted, and I'm going to say the way that and um, go, Lorelai, go ahead and go um, go ahead and tell us what that what what hitting him in the face looked like and what is you know what is what his reaction was. It, it's it's only going to be a moment, but um, I should have asked you to like paint that scene a little bit. Um, so I think as I scream, um, "Hey, clown wannabe, get away from my sister!" He does turn to look at me and i'd started throwing as i screamed it so as he turns it just smacks him straight in the mask and um they kind of stagger kind of and then stagger back a little clutching and then whatever happens happens where does the flashlight end up i think maybe like three to six inches like in front of their feet. Okay, so it's like rolled onto the, so it's like basically it's rolled on the floor and it's, I'm gonna say it's like, you know, shining mostly on the floor. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's lying on the it's lying on the ground um, or lying on the floor. So it's kind of like shining on the. So it's illuminating like like a streak of light on the floor and a little bit along like the the you know along like the lower cabinets in your in in your kitchen. Um, and nothing useful, yeah. <laughs> and nothing useful. Awesome. So um, so as Ashley goes to try to stab this guy um, with, and I'm I'm imagining you got like a big chef, you got like a big chef's knife or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so as Ashley goes to try to stab this guy, um, are you going to try to assist in any way? And if so, how? The main question is, do I even see it? Because the candle's out, the flashlight's like some random direction. That's true. That's true. There's not a lot of light in here at this point. Yeah. If you want to say you that no, you can't. If you want to say no, uh, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, I think what I instead do because I think, oh, Ashley is a sensible person. She's gonna like try to make a run for it, which means I should grab the light while she like gets to the door. So I'm gonna start like moving to get to the light, and I don't even realize that this is. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna try to are you are you grabbing the flashlight that's on the floor or uh, or is there uh, another no, one? The, the heavy duty one that we have. The heavy duty light, right, right, right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm so say... I want to I want to ask about scar. Yes. So like, how does it work? Do we just do we just introduce one or like, is there a limit on how many scars do you have? Let me look that up. Um... Give me just a sec here. Yeah, because we it's not something we have established right before. And it doesn't say like how do we establish it and I think it's anything. kind of done like flashbacks. Yeah, it, it is indeed done with flashbacks. So yeah, but it does that mean you can just like keep doing it? What is the consequence to a, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna read the section on scars here, <clears throat> uh, on revealing scars. So revealing scars, um, the player must tell a melancholy story from their character's past to reveal a scar and to intro and also introduce, and therefore introduce an element or a, a story element or side character. The story must take the place Take the form of a flashback where you describe events of the past as they're relevant to the present situation. Most importantly, this flashback must be a time where something went horribly wrong for the main character. Revealing a scar increases your anxiety by two because of the painful memories. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to reveal, if, if you want to have a quick flashback to presumably having a scuffle with someone or pulling a knife on someone or something here that was a painful memory that could help you here, uh, increase your anxiety by two and um, tell us, you know, give us the flashback scene and then you'll get another die. Uh, let me check something. Sure. Oh, and uh, when you do that, I think you need to introduce it. So you need to introduce a story element. When uh, you reveal a, a scar. A side <laughs> character or, or, or what? Yeah, it's it's a side character, or you can introduce a story element that that'll help you. Like, um, story element is kind of vague. It it is kind of vague. Um, <laughs> and... So in the example. Um, hold on, introducing a scar. Uh, 
Okay, so in the example, um, someone was in a in in the, in an example uh, of play. There was a character who was in a uh, who was in the waiting the waiting room or like the reception area of of an abandoned office building and is scuffling with some kind of unknown in, is, is and is scuffling with basically an intruder that's trying to kill them and was fumbling for a weapon and like and and so the GMs and I I need a weapon is there a rock nearby and the GM was like why would there be a why would there be a rock in a reception room. Okay, not a rock, but what about oh, like a salt lamp? Those things are heavy. GM, <clears throat> uh, well, there's a good chance there's got one here, but I want. But if you want to introduce one to the story, you're going to have to reveal a scar. Tell me a sad story about a rock somehow. <clears throat> so if you want to introduce some, so if you want to introduce a rules element, you have to tell a. So you you would you would tell a. Um, you tell a flashback story that was somewhat tangentially related to the story element you're, you're trying to introduce. So in this yeah, case, maybe to um hold, hold on, let me. Uh, where where is this? Uh... We're saying oh, if you if you have a copy of the book, uh, I'm looking at pages 23, 26, and twenty seven. Might have a PDF. I mean, I think it's in one wow. of in the Texas Trans Rights Bundle or something. Yeah, but checking if I had it downloaded, which I do. I was gonna say, I know Quietus was in one of those big bundles that came out in the past couple of years. That's where I picked up my PDF. Um, I, I forget which one, but it might've been like the bundle for racial, the oh, itch bundle page? for racial justice or something. Um, on which on the on the PDF, it's or on the physical book, it's on pages. Uh, it's on page. The example I was looking at was on page twenty-seven. And again, oh, that's, the oh, okay. that's the example of play of how to reveal a scar. Uh, that's it. Uh, okay, wait. Oh. And uh, so okay, and the 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 player goes okay. So a couple of years ago, when I was in constant pain and no one would diagnose me with anything, I was driving back this way from the doctor. I was furious and sad, driving too uh, fast. No, no, it, it's it's just like the scar sounds a lot of like flashback in other FITD game. FITD, and, yeah. That's that's more it's, or less what it is. No, it it sounds like. Uh, it sounds a lot like. Uh, it's either introducing story element or get a dice bonus. Maybe the story element introduced here is that um, is the sheer power you're putting into the strike. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was going to say, or that you know, if you want, or yeah, the sheer power, or that you you know how, or that. Maybe the story element is that you know how to knife fight. Oh, geez. Give us the deets. Give us the deets on that. Or that you're, yeah, you, I mean, whether that's, you know, yeah, if, like the, the deets on how, on how you actually know how to fight with a knife. Or alternatively, that you have, you know, that, that you know how to fight in general and give us the deets on like how, how you would know on that. And that story would have to be somewhat sad. Yeah, I, I do have an idea. I just I'm not sure how, like how this system should. Yeah. So anyway, mm. hold on. Yeah. So I think. Mm. Oh, here it Yeah, so anyway, I think what I think is that I think like uh I think Lorela doesn't know that this is probably when I was like I think when I was maybe I was like out of town, like I was studying somewhere, maybe in college, maybe in maybe in high school, or maybe like Anyway, I was hang out with friends in a bar or something, and like so, like it's just a bunch of girls, and so there's this guy who like didn't know how, didn't know when to quit, and like so, there's this one other girl, like uh, we just call her Lizzie. So Lizzie, like 
he keeps hitting on Lizzie and and he just don't know when to quit. And and after like home, like when we leave, when we leave, like when we leave left the bar, and he and like a few of his mates just like come up to us and drunk. And it seems like situation is going to get really bad and we are probably going to have to like call the cops. And then like Lizzie just suddenly she like out of nowhere she grabbed I don't know it's like a razor or like a like a scissor or something. I, I did it, it's dark so I didn't see it very clearly but basically she just stabbed the guy in the eye and, and like that thing just stayed with me for a long time. And I I don't think anyone like contacted the authority and we never pick we never like find out what actually happened to the guy. Like did he die or like did he lose the eye or, or anything? But yeah, so that definitely like stopped those guys from from bothering us. So yeah, that made an impression on me. Yeah. Love it. Flashback to last time that, you know, you were, yeah, that you, uh, that you, that you stabbed somebody. So yeah, I, I will absolutely give you another die on that because you know how to, because you know how to fight. So we've got one die for doing it. You got, are, are you pushing yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I'm going to push myself. Too, so so, add, so it looks like you already did, but add, add two anxiety, but add two anxiety for introducing the flashback, for introducing the flashback. And we'll add some yeah. more anxiety after, after we resolve the die roll. Uh, my highest is five. Highest is five. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Let's. Um, I'll resolve that in a moment. Roll another die, and uh, half of that rounded, uh, half of that rounded up is going to add to your anxiety. Oh, I, I rolled a five again. Okay, so add another. So got it. Uh, add another three to your anxiety. <laughs> we are doing well. Fantastic. So, so this stressed. was a. So this is a desperate roll. Um, so you achieve your goal. Um, so you achieve your goal. I take so so on a desperate on a four to five. You you get your goal. So you have stabbed him. The GM takes two points of dread. Went to the head. I already added that. Oh, you already did. Okay, wait. I thought I only had one. Thank you for adding that for me. Um, GM takes a point of dread. And the player chooses to either suffer su suffer a severe consequence from this action or to raise your despair. Um, so I think the severe consequence is, um, yeah, you stabbed this guy, but he still got he's. I mean, he was reeling, but he still had one hand. He still had one hand on his axe. The severe consequence is going to be um, the severe consequence is he's going to like. Hit you the business end of the axe, and you're going to take the con and you're going to take the um, uh, you're going to take the the severe consequence would be um, axe would be axe wound to the side. So you like hit you pretty hard in the abdomen. Yeah, yeah. Or you can increase your despair by one. Your despair uh, is currently at zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any effect on despair before it hits five? Um, despair doesn't really uh, having your your despair doesn't really have any mechanical effect. It's not hit points. Um, okay. But when your despair hits five, hits five, uh, the hor the horror has claimed you. Yeah, I, and, I think I'm going to take one point of despair for now. Okay. Fantastic, um, but you but you totally stabbed this guy. What does that look like? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I'm in a very like like rage field. Like I I just keep like I keep swinging the knife at him at them but like i don't think most of that because it's actually it, i was 
like because they have a mask and everything, and it's dark. So I'm mostly stabbing them in the like abdomen. And but if you stab like on the upper chest, that like, most of that is really like shallow wounds because of the ribs. So like I I I I stab a lot of time, but I probably just got like one or two good like good steps in. If if like yeah. Let's assume like this this thing is is human. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, you get you, you get a you get a couple of good yeah you get a couple of good uh, you, yeah you get a good stab in. Um, you think that you th you think that it might have been deflected. You don't think it went between his ribs, but uh, that's that's definitely going to leave a mark. Um, um, he goes, ugh, 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 ah, you know. Uh, he, he doesn't actually say any discernible words, but um, you know he he kind of stagger he kind of staggers backward. He's like leaning on his axe. Um, I think you have because you have damaged this thing. I think I'm going to increase your hope by one because whatever this thing, it sure does seem to it sure does seem to be an acting human. So um, you've maybe bought yourself some time. Um, what do you, what do you do? Uh, I think Lo Lorelei, let's uh, let's let's put the shot put the spotlight back on you. Um, we have established we have previously established that yeah you've you've got one of those like heavy heavy metal mag heavy lights. Heavy duty flashlights, yeah. And you know I'm going to just say I don't think we need to roll there. You know where it is. You 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 know where it is. You have it. You turn and you turn it on, and it's a pretty powerful light as well. What what mm. do you do now? I'm going to swing it towards where the dude is and uh when swing it you mean you shine the light or are you gonna like whack yeah, yeah, him shine with it? it not, not oh, okay um he is um yeah he's 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 staggered he, he's staggered he staggered back a little bit you definitely see some uh well i mean he's wearing he's wearing he's wearing all black including like black gloves so i'm guessing you probably don't really see blood but he's clutching his He's clutching at his chest, staggers back a little bit, <clears throat> but then gets to his feet and like raises his axe again. He's got, you know, he's he's holding he's he's holding his he's holding his chest with his left hand. So now he's only got he's only got one hand on the axe. <clears throat> but um, he's uh, it looks like he is slowed down but not stopped. And he's probably going to continue his attack. I think I want to try to tackle him. Oh, okay. Like just jump and yeah. <clears throat> and try to jump on and tackle this intruder. <clears throat> Fun. Okay. <clears throat> um, I think that's going to be another desperate roll. We're so desperate. Um, Definitely I mean, going to push myself. I was going to say you're kind of you're, you're you're fighting for your lives in your own kitchen right now. In a thunderstorm where we can't even run away because, well, where are we going to go? I mean, you know, you could conceivably. I mean, your car is in that garage. You could conceivably make a run for your car and like take a run for it. And, deal and with you the know, other intruder. <clears throat> and you know that, and at least you know that the cops allegedly are coming and. 14 minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> around 15 minutes. Around well, 15 minutes. Keeping is not, yeah. Yeah, in around 15 minutes, because at this point, that phone call you made feels like it was at least half an hour ago when it was in, in fact, like 30 seconds ago. Um, mm. So you are going to try to tackle this guy. Awesome. So that's a desperate role. Uh, I assume you're pushing. So you got one. I, I are, are you pushing yourself? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> um, do you want to try to reveal a scar and work in a story element that you reveal th that you reveal thereby? Hmm. Yes. Um, give me a second to think about what I want to add and therefore the flashback. Please do. I think similar vein to what um, one ended up doing, it's going to be the 
sheer desperation I'm putting into this tackle. And um, when we were younger, like old, I was old enough to remember and Ashley was probably young enough that she forgot and it was pretty traumatizing thing nonetheless. But <laughs> um, we'd gone to like a nearby slightly larger town for, um, you know, small family vacation, couldn't afford a lot, but you know, small trip, small vacation. And our parents had gone to um, purchase like tourist maps of the place. And Ashley and I were just standing there waiting for them to come back. And I stepped away for a minute because I was young and I was distracted by like a pretty bug or something. And then I turned around to be like, oh, Ash, look at this. And there was this in hindsight, it was probably pretty small for a dog, but Ashley was tiny back then, so it was just this large hulking figure, and it was just towering over my sister, so I just ran at it, and this creature, even though like they're leaning back on their axe, it's very, very similar to what I was looking at back then, and it just kind of hits me. So I'm going to take to anxiety for that. One. And uh, awesome. And what's what's the story element that you want to include in this in this tackle? Just the sheer amount of desperation I'm putting into this. Love it. OK. So that's I guess great. that's so yeah. So that's uh, so yeah, that's um, three dice. Six. We're so nice. lucky we're not taking lowest because I rolled a six, five, one. Nice. <clears throat> okay. And again, on a desperate roll, um, you achieve your stated goal. I take a dread. Um, and the anxiety die because uh, I did push myself. And the anxiety die. So since this was desperate, that's going to be half. Yeah. That's a five. So that's three. That's another three. Okay. You're up to yeah. eight anxiety. I am so stressed about fighting for our lives. You have, you have uh, <clears throat> let's see. So um, you have achieved your stated goal. Um, what does it look like when you tackle this guy? I think um, they've kind of stopped leaning and they're kind of gearing up to kind of take another swing. And as they do so, I just kind of rush in from the side and I kind of tackle them to the ground and um if i'm lucky the axe kind of slides away from their grasp and um yeah okay well, maybe um, this time i have time to um demask them maybe <clears throat> okay um yeah you knock yeah you yeah you've 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 knocked him over you've uh you've you've jumped on him um you've knocked the knack you've knocked the axe away from him um, and yeah, you are, you are on top of this guy. He's definitely bigger than you are. Uh, he's probably stronger than you are, but you are, you, you've definitely knocked him off. You've knocked him off balance. He's flat on his back. Um, doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have the, the initial weapon. Um, and, um, yeah, what, so yeah, you're, you're on top of him. He's, Hold on, my landline is ringing. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and my wife got it before I did. Okay. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, you've knocked the axe away from him. You are on top of him. Um, Ashley, what do you do in reaction to your sister tackling this guy? Oh, um, do I want to do anything here? <clears throat> Not yet. Yeah, Ashley, what are uh, so what are, what are you doing? Yeah, I think I'm going to try to like pick up the eggs just so like the guy can't take it back okay. or cannot take it back easily. 
I, I don't think we need to roll there. Um, I think you've, I think you now have an, I think you now have an ax. Um, yeah, then, then, then I'm going to put like the knife. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put a knife somewhere like under a, like under a refrigerator or something somewhere like that guy cannot reach. And I think should, I think maybe I will tell like Lorela say something like, hey, 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 let's just go. I, I got his, I got the ex. I, let's like, we should, there's no point like fighting this guy anymore or anything. No, sadly enough, Lorelai is at eight anxiety. She is in no state to be making sensible decisions and she is holding a heavy duty flashlight. She's going to whack him over the head. Okay. As many times as she can. Got it. Got it. Um, awesome. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're, yeah, I, I, I think we are, I think we are still desperate. I think we are still desperate here. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let, let, let's figure out. So yeah, I think, I think we're going to call for another desperate role here. Um, you know, you are definitely in a better position than you had been, but things could, you know, you don't know what other tricks this guy has up his sleeve or how strong <clears throat> he is. So yeah, I think we're still desperate. So you got one for doing it. Um, are you going to try to push yourself? Yeah. Okay. And um, let's see. Just not sure what happens when your anxiety I gets. I think your anxiety. 10. Yeah. And that you max out at 10, right? It does max out at 10, yes. Uh, what happened when that ha happened? Like if I took it to eleven. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually looking that up. What happens? Uh, when you're, what happens uh, on the when character, goes to on the character keeper, it just says all future roles are desperate. Yep. If your main character ever reaches ten, you panic. Panicking means you can only attempt desperate actions from that point onward. So even if you even if we get away from here and it would normally be tense or uneasy, uh, you, you're 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 still acting desperately. Um, well, difficult. Um, no, I think I'm not going to push myself. Okay. Um, and Ashley, are you helping? Oh, wait. Lorela is holding a flashlight, right? Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. She, and she's about, she's going to try to like beat the intruder, beat the intruder, uh, severely about the head with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I can definitely see, see both of them because yeah. So I oh, yeah. think. Yeah, I think like I, I was trying to get Lorela away, but when I see like she's not going to do that, I think I sigh and I, I how do I help? I'm probably not going to just swing the exit because that, that might be dangerous for Lorela as well. And and I'm not like that interested in murdering this guy. But yeah, I think I will go and like, put my feet on, on his head or, or like on his back or something to like, you know, keep him down and, and while- I'm, like, I'm, I'm imagining that he's like flat on his, he's like flat on his back um, and, you know, and- You could stand Lurley, on his hands. kind of on top of him. So yeah, like standing on his hand or standing on his yeah, arm yeah, to yeah. try to try to yeah, prevent yeah. him from defending and, himself. That would, that, that would totally work. Yeah, and I also like raise the eggs, like just, like just, uh, uh, intimidatingly like oh, don't try anything or else yeah so, so right. 
I'm going to mark one anxiety to yeah, mark help. one anxiety for helping. Um, so Lorelei, you are acting and you're accepting help, but you're not pushing. But you're not you're not pushing and you're not trying to introduce a scar. So that's going to be a two yeah. die desperate two roll. Dice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a four. Four. Okay. So you achieve your stated goal. Um, the GM takes two more points of dread. I'm going to do that. Oh, that brings up my dread to six. Um, uh, the player chooses to increase your despair by one or take a severe consequence. I'm not sure what that consequence is yet, but. Um, I think I'm going to go for um, despair. And go for despair? Okay, awesome. Um, and what is that? So, like, go, go ahead and give us go ahead and give us that scene. What does that look like? I think um, Ashley. I can hear Ashley calling me and kind of trying to tug me away briefly, but none of that matters because right here, right now, I can take care of this threat to us. Like, I can knock them out cold until the cops get here, whenever they get here. Because like, it's been forever since I called. How are they not here yet? And I'm reach and I'm reaching up with the flashlight and holding the um, head of it so I have like a good grip to like swing I kind of see Ashley out of the corner of my eye corner of my vision step onto um, his arm so he can't defend himself and then I just kind of start hitting him and I don't think I stop until someone stops me I think um, so I'll okay so you you have you have rendered this intruder unconscious. I'm going to increase. I'm going to increase hope by one because you've you've taken this guy out. Um, and that's and so you've taken him out, and he is he is unconscious. And that's when you hear this. That's when you hear. Um, that's when you hear the sound of the inner door to your apartment like burst open. Um, and that's also when you hear the sound of a small gasoline engine start um, and the sound of a chainsaw. <laughs> I am going to spend four dread. Dropping that down to two. Uh, I'm going to spend four dread to um, <clears throat> increase. Um, let's see, let me do that. Let's increase a main character. I'm going to, and uh, you've got another. You've got another intruder in your house um, who's now who's apparently got a chainsaw, and I think I'm going to increase um, since Lorelei is the one who's like kind of in the moment, like whacking this guy. I think Ashley is the one who's going to notice first. So I'm spending four dread to increase your despair to two. Okay. And there's somebody else in the house and this guy has a chainsaw. What do you do? You don't see him yet. It's coming from the direction of the door that leads to the stairs down. And you do have an ax. Yeah, but it's not a chainsaw. I think, I say, let's toss this guy downstairs. I mean, I think we Lola's toss him down. Stop you. I think we toss him downstairs, and while like they are distracted or something, we try to like run for like try to. Go out of the window. So you're going to try to pick him up and take him to the room, take take him to the stairwell and throw him down, or yeah, or, or did you say you're going to try to toss him out the window? I, I didn't. No, quite, no, no. We are going stairs. I, I want to toss him down the stairs to distract the chainsaw guy, and then we are going to try to escape through the window. Okay. Do we have a fire escape? All right. Do we? <sighs> I mean, it's only 
it's a two store building, so probably um, not. You wouldn't necessarily have one, but if you want to, but if you, I mean, that would be a, I mean, that that would be the kind of story element we could introduce through scar one of one of you, one of you narrating through one of you narrating, like doing a scar flashback. Let me think. Why would we have a fire escape? Why would you have a fire escape on a second or we could store have a apartment? ladder? Yeah. Yeah, a simple oh, ladder so that goes up. Quick bio break. Uh, I think you know, later. That, that's a good. Yeah. That's a good idea. Why don't we take? Yeah. Why don't we take five? And why don't we take five? We'll be back. Yeah. Let, let, let's take five. We'll be back then. Yeah. And we're back. <clears throat> so it sounded like. Uh, at, so Mona, you were posing that um, you grab the you grab the now unconscious body of. Uh, of of happy of happy face intruder, yeah. um, drag him toward the stair, drag him toward the stairs, and presumably throw him down the stairs. Um, hopefully, as a distraction to this other intruder that is apparently now in your apartment. Yeah. Okay, you could certainly do that. I guess that is predicated upon the other intruder not actually being like like not trying to interfere. Um, and I'm just going to say that the sound of that chainsaw is getting close. It's whoever it is, whoever it is, is standing. In, I, I mean, you can just tell from the sound because that's that. I mean, it sounds probably sounds much closer than it actually is because you've got an intruder intruder with a chainsaw in your house. Um, but you're guessing it's probably in the living room, and that's the room you got to get through to get to the stairs. And. Um, so if that's the plan, um, you're probably going to have to get get past the. You're going to probably have to get past the intruder. So probably throwing him down the stairs won't be a distraction. Although, um, <laughs> um, and as you uh, as as you contemplate your next action, the sound of that the sound of that chainsaw is getting closer. Or maybe we can just go out of the window and not throw it down. Just make a break for it. Yeah. Got it. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were talking about uh, maybe introducing a scar such that there's like a fire escape ladder out this yeah, window. So, that you're some in. kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that, that would totally be a, that would totally be a thing. Um, would one of you like to take would one of you like to like narrate a like narrate a scar as to why why you have an escape ladder in your kitchen window? I do not want to be stuck at desperate actions. Yeah, I, I'm thinking how to. I mean, we have a lot of candles in here. It could have been like an actual fire situation where we, after which we realized we needed them. Oh, that, that's a good idea. Maybe you're, maybe this apartment only has one staircase and there was an issue that you needed to get out of the house at one point in the past and therefore you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so, I was so, going to say. so yeah. Well, well, so what was that? So what was that situation? I'm going to say there was like this other thunderstorm and there was like, uh, did lightning yeah, actually we, did lightning actually strike the house once and like cause a small no. fire? I'm just tossing ideas out there. Or we had hella candles lit because the lights were out and then one of them toppled over and then Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's like candles. Like over and I think. And was that the was the previous house fire? What? Why you don't have parents anymore? I mean, we haven't established why. I mean, you haven't, let, you haven't established what happened to your parents. Yeah, I mean, let make sense, that's right? That's very solid, maybe. Well, 
it's a wonder we still keep candles in the house. Yeah, I, I think we can like heavily allude to the like the pot the possibility that two of you were able to get out the stairs, but the fire cut your parents <clears throat> off. And so ever since then, you would, and since since that happened, you had to install some you had to install a fire escape ladder. No. I, I imagine Just like maybe it's again. maybe maybe it's like uh like we are downstairs. And they're upstairs for some reason. Maybe we are like we are like like locking up like the doors and, and like making sure the like freezer are are closed and things like that. And so when that happens, so let's just I imagine let's just like this this staircase staircase of fire like between between us like us two sister and our parents and, and we just kind of watch like like they like you know like they they are choking and choking from the smoke and Get getting out. burned and telling us to uh, go go don't 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 care about us don't just go to find the gadget and and yeah and then i'm kind of dragging ashley out of the front doorway because like i don't want yeah, to lose yeah. her too you don't want her to run, try to run through the flames to save the parent. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh, tragic, tragic and parallel with the current story. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm just looking at the time. We are starting to run low. So I'm um, going to try to like pick this up a little bit, pick up the pace a little bit to hopefully come yeah, to yeah. a, hopefully come to a conclusion. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah. Um, you've got, so yeah, you've got a, um, so yeah, you've got a fire. So yeah, you've got the you've got the fire escape. Um, I think at this point, um, another intruder steps into another intruder steps into the kitchen, wearing a like you know, he's got a um, you know he's got exactly the same mask. He's got like a, the, the yellow smile face mask. Also dressed in black, he's got a chainsaw. Steps into the kitchen, um, you know, like the eerie light, you know. I mean, you've got the flashlight that you're kind of like shining around, like trying to get stuff. And, you know, he's there. Um, I think it's going to be a, he's not immediately, he's there. So you can't go the other way. So if you're going to go out the fire escape that we've just established, um, you got to die for that. You get it. Uh, I, I think it's, I think this is going to be a tense role. Um, I think this one's going to be tense, not desperate, just because, um, well, we haven't had a tense role yet. Um, and you're just trying to, and, you know, you're not actually, you're not trying to like directly, you're not trying to directly attack anybody. You're just trying to get out. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a tense role. Um, one, I think we'll have one of you roll for, I think we'll have one of you roll. For, and I think, and since um, Ashley, you were the one who established the, the story i think you're i think you're going to be rolling but it's going to be for the both of you yeah and can i definitely help with this because you can definitely have yep you can action. definitely yep you can definitely help because that's a shared action so you've got two dice uh so actually we got three uh you, you we got three dice because you're helping you've established it you've established a story right. element from the scar and one for doing it so yeah go ahead and roll yeah, so three I'm dice for to... a tense roll okay i got a six Got a six. Okay. Nice. You um yeah, uh go ahead and go ahead and tell us what it looks like the two of you like scrambling out um uh, scrambling out into the into the stormy night uh down this steel fire escape ladder. Yeah, so I guess I guess I throw the like the X down first because I don't want them to like get it and um, I think at first Ashley is definitely dragging me. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think so. Like I, I, I think actually, like I force like Lorelai to go down first, just to make sure like she goes down. And and so like once I started to also climb down, I think Lorelai is already. Uh, she's on the ground and she has come down at least a bit so she was like helping me like like 
supporting my feet or waist or like making it like safer for me to climb down. I think that's what happens. <clears throat> okay, yeah. And um, yeah, so you're now, um, so now you're in the back, you're in the back of your, you're in the back of your shop slash, slash house um, down the ladder. Um, it's still night. The wind is howling. The rain is coming down in sheets. Um, there's like, once you get down, there's this, you know, there's a bright flash of lightning almost immediately followed by a loud clap of thunder. So whatever it was, was really close. Uh, you look up, smile, smile face, smile, smiley face number two is leans out the window, you know, like with the chain, like with the chainsaw, um, like looking down at you. And then he goes back into the house. Um, what do you do? So we heard gas revving, right? If I swing the flashlight around, do I see like a running vehicle? Oh, well, the, 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 the sound I was describing was the sound of the chainsaw. Oh, okay. This, the small, um, the small engine, the small gasoline engine. Yeah, that was, that was, that was mm -hmm. the chains. That was someone like pulling the, uh, pulling the start cord on the chainsaw. So that was, that sound is back in the house. Back in the house. Okay. Um, can we like oh, and, oh, and by the, the way, garage and see if our car's there? Mm -hmm. Um, sure. And I was just going to say the, uh, and because of that success, I increased your hope to three. Yay. Um, you can totally go back and check. You can totally go back and check the, <clears throat> and check the garage. Yeah, I think we should because walking in this weather is not very practical. I mean, driving's terrible too, but you know, walking's worse. Uh, it's, it's, some, it's a little better. Mm. You go into the garage, um, your car is there, but the hood is up. You don't, you didn't leave the hood up. What do you do? At this point, I'm just gonna say, we, we should just make a break for it. We don't know yeah, how many I, of them there I are. I agree. Obviously they have fucked up the car. We're also, I have, I, I have kept the X with me just in case. Oh yeah, I, I assumed you kept the axe with you. Yeah, I said so. Yeah, I said I agree. We sh they have always fuck up the car, so we should just we should just go. Yeah, gonna start like just you're gonna just start like running. You're just gonna go to the go for the road, and you're gonna start <laughs> running like running down the road toward town. Yeah, I think we are going yeah. to go to a gadgets place first, right? Just in yeah, case. it's two miles. It's two mile. It's two miles down the road toward town is what we've established. Yeah, because it's closer, and if he's home, he might be able to help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, you start. Okay. Yeah, you you start. Uh, you start running. You start running down the. You start running down the road. Um. <clears throat> Uh, you start running down the road, and as you're running down, oh, um, as you're running down the road, um, you do hear the sound. You do hear the sound of a, of a of a vehicle coming toward you from behind. Looking over your shoulder, it looks like it, it's only got one headlight, and the and I'm going to say you you you've been running you know, like you started running, and you're like running as fast as you can in this terrible terrible storm. Visibility is terrible. There's little light except the light from, except everything's lit up every, you know, every few seconds by, by a lightning flash. You do have your flash, like, and, uh, yeah. you do have your flashlight. Um, you've gone, you've, you've been running like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe four or five minutes, although it probably feels like an awful lot longer than that. So you're, you know, you've maybe gone, you know, you've maybe gone like, half a mile down the road and you hear the sound of an engine behind you. And it's, it's, it's the sound of a motorcycle engine. Um, and you look behind and like you glance behind you and there is a single headlight. That's there's a single headlight that's approaching you from behind. Uh, it's getting closer. I mean, obviously a motorcycle can run faster than you can, uh, than, than you can run. Um, what do you do? And the other thing that immediately comes to mind is who the hell would ride a motorcycle in this kind of weather? 
we already established these people are insane. Um, I mean, I feel like I, I should I just, to... I should just stand on the side of the road and like put out the eggs. <laughs> oh, try, <laughs> like, oh, try to, oh, try, oh, try to swing the axe at, try to, try yeah. to swing the axe at, at whoever's. Um... No, no, try to let them uh, swing the axe on this. <laughs> So basically, like so they're just like driving, yeah. like like uh, hide I, behind, I, I, like basically I, like yeah. hide. So like hide behind a telephone pole, and as this, and as the motorcycle like drives, and it looks like oh, and and it's it's clearly it's like driving down the shoulder. It's not really or like close to the shoulder. Um, so you're gonna try to like hide behind a telephone pole, and as as it comes as as it like goes by, you're gonna hop out and try to like swing at the uh, swing at the driver. Is is that the plan? Maybe just push the axe out as we hear it getting. So they just drive into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, they are just going to drive into it. Okay. Um, I think this sounds like another desperate role. Um, this is like Home Alone, but worse. Yeah. Uh, so I got one die. So I think I, I, I have an idea about how Lorelai can help. I think she, like, she stands on the other side of the road with the flashlight. So, so it's like, She's very obvious. So like and therefore they think I'm with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, I, I, okay. I'm, I'm less, so like Oh, so you've got so you've gone a, so you've gone ahead with the flashlight and Ashley is yeah, like hanging so, behind. Yeah, yeah. So they will assume like uh, Lorella is with me with the flashlight, but actually I'm on the other side of like yeah. I love it. Um, I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to give you, yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. That's, um, yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's total, that's totally helping. So take an extra die for that. <clears throat> um, want to try to introduce anything else? Are you going to push yourself or, uh, cause I, this is, this is going to be a desperate role cause this is clearly extremely dangerous. Hmm. So you're at two dice. Do you want to try to get a third? Yeah, I'm just going to push myself. Okay. Oh, oh let me see. Push myself is just yeah, I one mean, die. Air. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, whatever whatever your role, it's whatever your role is gonna push you to 10, 10 anxiety. So I think all roles from now on are going to be desperate anyway. Yeah, it's a, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, hold on, I, I one of my dice rolled away, so uh -huh. I dropped okay, I got one of my dice. It's under the table. Yeah, I, I got a six. Got a six. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Okay, you um, yeah, you 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 hit this guy and you knock him off. You hit this guy and you knock him off the knock him off the motorcycle. What does what does that look like? And I'm gonna I'm going to in. And again, I'm I'm going to increase your I'm going to increase your hope to four because you've you know, presumably defeated yet a, yet another one of these guys. Um, yeah, so I guess I just like hide behind a lamppost, and when that guy like almost comes through, I I just kind of I swing the axe, and and it I think it hit like somewhere between the neck or and the like chest, so. Yeah, but they are going really fast. So it's going to like cut deeper and also it it runs then like down from their bike. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's knocked off the bike. The bike, you know, the bike falls over and like spins around on the ground and spins just past and, and goes just past Lorelei. And that's when you look at the bike, and that bike is super familiar. That's um yeah this this motorcycle uh you 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 recognize this motorcycle it's um um this this is gadget's motorcycle he's one of these one of these guys must have must have stolen a motorcycle from gadget and actually you head over and you check out the uh you check out the person who you've just knocked off the the motorcycle and this person's not dressed in black at all um this is your old friend Gadget. Oh shit. 
fun. Um, I am blowing all of my dread, setting it down to zero to introduce a major consequence. And I am going to increase, uh, in, in, uh, let's see, and I think that's going to, hold on, do I want to do that? So the thing yeah. is, I was going to call back and be like, did we get him? And Ashley, what do you say to that? Hmm. I was going to say that. Is it? I hope that wasn't I hope that wasn't too nasty, but that's totally the sort of thing that would happen in a movie like this. Yeah, I, 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 I was think fully I just, expecting it. I, I think I That's just so said, yeah, yeah, we got him. So okay, basically, let's go. Do you want to? We should check in on Gadget. This is this is his bike. I mean, he taught me how to drive. Do you want me to? I think I can drive us to his place. I say, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, let, let, let the bastards must have stolen his bike. Maybe that's why he hasn't been like picking up, uh, keeping up our calls. Yeah, let's go, let's go. And um, this isn't exactly in the rules, but we're we're running low on time here, and I think it's um, <clears throat> we are running low on time, and I just think it's I think it's appropriate. Um, I'm I'm going to increase Ashley's despair by one because she just like presumably knows that she just may have. May have, may have killed uh, their friend. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how close to the rules that is, but I think that just makes I think that just makes sense. I think it's something that makes story sense. We can kind of fudge it a little. Exactly. And I'm at now at no dread. Uh, you are at hope four. Uh, yeah, the two of you get on. The two of you hop onto the motorcycle, and you like tear down the road toward uh, uh, toward Gadget's place. Um, the weather is terrible. Um, under normal circumstances, I would have you make a an uneasy or intense roll here. But because you're now both at max anxiety, uh, just negotiating this motorcycle in the uh, nego negotiating this motorcycle in these in these weather conditions. Do either of you? I'm just going to say, do either of you have a motor? Well, you know what? That's something we might. That's something we might establish in um, in backstory. Although we are we are really running out of time. Um, let's just have. I think we're going to have one more roll of the game, just because we are we are about to run out of time here. Um, and if this is a successful roll, this is going to push your hope to five, which means you get away from the intruders and and the game is over. Um, so I think we're going to have one final. I think we're going to have one final roll here of you desperately tearing down, tearing down the road. Both of you on the same motorcycle, in horrific weather conditions, and yeah, yeah. that's going to be a that's going to be a desperate roll. Yeah, I think Lorelai just established that Gadget told her how to ride the bike. So okay, so I think she's like she's the one that's actually driving. Okay, and so I, I think Laura got it. So Lorelai, you were, I think you're the one. I think you're the one rolling here because because you're actually you're actually driving, and right. Ashley is like hanging off the back, like sitting on the back behind you, holding on to you for dear life. Neither of you have so, a helmet. Of course not. I know how. So the thing is, our anxieties are at ten, so we can't increase them any further. So we're kind of stuck at a one die roll. We are stuck at a one die roll. Uh, ha, 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 fun unless I like push Ashley off the bike but we're not going to do that <laughs> uh, yeah okay. just going to roll that four nice um go ahead I, I, nice um yeah I, I think I think this is, I think the way one of these, I think how one of these movies would end is pretty much, you know, like going off and like going off into the, like going off into the night and you've gotten away from the, you've gotten away from these intruders. So go ahead and why don't we go ahead and give, give us that last scene before the credits roll. 
Oh, but it's it's a oh, but it was a partial success. Um, yeah. So that's two dread, one more despair for me, because I don't want severe consequences in this weather. Got it. I get two dread. You get another. You get another despair, but that mm -hmm. does increase your hope to five. So <clears throat> the game is over. You get away. Why don't you go ahead and um, let's do. <clears throat> Let's do let's do two scenes. So Lorelei, if you if you would narrate um, just the scene of you like getting away from the final scene, and then we'll have Ashley narrate sort of like the we'll have we'll have Ashley like sort of like narrate a little bit of an epilogue that's you know maybe maybe we see a couple of maybe we see a couple of intercut scenes as as the credits roll. And or possibly an end credit sequence. So what, what's it what's it look like? What's it look like getting away? I think um, so. I'm I have my head down and I'm kind of trying to like be as aerodynamic as possible as I'm like running as fast as we can without like slipping on the road. And I'm actually pointing the flashlight we have down at the road so I can see the terrain because the headlight only goes straight and. I feel so relieved that we finally got this guy and we finally got away. And I think that's going to be a direct equal, it's not direct, equal and opposite emotion to what Ashley must be feeling because she knows that that last guy we got was not one of them. It was our friend that we're going to see. So I think that's a good contrast in both our characters at that point in time. So um, yeah, I'm going to say that you know you pull into um, and it's and again it's still dark because the power is still out. You pull into we're going to say you pull into uh, gadgets gadget shop and it's it's still all dark. And while you're there um, from town, um, a police cruiser with its a police cruiser with its lights flashing like drives past you toward drives past you toward where your shop is. Um, and that's and that's when the credits start rolling. Ashley, if you would like to tell us like a couple of little vignettes that may that may be like you know stills that are shown like as as the credits roll and or uh, and or a post credit sequence. Yeah, yeah. So I think obviously when we get to Gadget's place, he's not there. And I think what like what happens uh, a couple like maybe a few days later, like the cops had taken in who, uh, whoever like those guys are, like those intruders are. And, and I think like actually like can cling about like the guy being like gadget. And, and I will leave it to like Kavya to decide like how, uh, how Lorella would feel about it. But I think like there was some like messy, annoying like code procedure, but ultimately like it's pretty clearly we are doing self-defense, so we, so uh, legally we didn't get into a lot of like actual trouble. But I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Gadget survives. Yeah, I kind of think he's dead, and and like, yeah, that's pretty bad. And and I I think Lorella and Ashley has like a long talk about what to do with the like the the store because like the mortgage is still and and all the shit that happened and, and it get messed up a little bit and yeah yeah I think like that's what happened. And mind if I do a uh, mind if I do a post post credit sequence? Yeah. You know, four years later you're at a um, like totally different location. You're like in, I mean, now it's like, this sequence happened, I don't know, in like Ohio or Pennsylvania or something like that. Four years later, it's established, um, it's like Southern California. There's like, pal there's like you know, a couple of palm trees, um, you know, like it's the established shot is like the, um, like the LA skyline. Um, 
Lorelei, Lorelei and, and Ashley are like in a different, are like in a different apartment. Um, they're both um, like, I'll say it looks like, it looks like Ashley is, you know, like no longer dressed as, no longer dressed so gothy is now like, it, like there's, there's things in the scene which make it clear that, that Ashley's like, Ashley's in college now. Lorelei's got like a totally different job. Um, you've reestablished yourselves. Um, you know, and uh, you're coming back to the apartment. You open it, you, and there's a and there's a package addressed to the two of you on the floor, like, like, by by your apartment. And you pick it in, you pick it up. There's no return address. Oh, there, there is. There's no name on the return address, but you recognize the actual address as being Gadget's shop. And you open up the package, and inside the package. And this is where the this is where the film ends. You open up the package, and inside is a plastic smile face mask. On that, next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was Quietus. Um, it. Definitely took a more action adventure turn than, I, or I should say, action horror turn than I uh, than I was yeah, initially thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I wasn't yeah. a, like the 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 scene that the scene where I thought that turned was when uh, when Ashley decided to stab the intruder because I assumed you were just going to try to run away from him. Yeah, but I I feel like especially <laughs> given like it's a one shot and like we don't have a lot of time. I know. Drive, so, dr yeah. drive your characters it, like. Yeah. Play your characters if, like if, you're driving a stolen car. If it's a longer game, maybe like we would make more sensible choices and have time to like pace out the like the horror horror aspect. But yeah, mm. tragic yeah, going... horror needs like time to build. Yeah, I was going for um, yeah. Since since this is this is since this was a one shot and we only had like three hours to play, I was I was going for like. I was obviously going for like masked home invaders, like the strangers, rather than something a little more, a little more cerebral and creepy, like like the Babadook. But that just seemed seemed to make sense given our established that um, you know you were being attacked by like some kind of like crazy masked killers. Yeah, and I also feel like when you are attacked by a crazy like a masked killer, like the flight and fight response are basically equally likely especially when you have a knife and and once you establish that that thing can be stabbed it's kind of like logically followed it's gonna that. be stabbed yeah makes a so whole like lot of sense we, yeah if we are like heading in different direction like a more supernatural horror direction where like we stab that thing and it doesn't seem to do anything uh, it will be a very different story yeah yeah, I, I had decided in my mind that these intruders were going to be very, were going to be like very human, just like psychopathic killers, because that's the kind of movie I was going to, I was, I was shooting for. Um, in the back of my mind, I had a, I had a, if we had a little more, you know, things had run out a little differently, I, I had a, I had a scene in mind where, you know, Gadget shows up to try to help you and, but the, but the killers get him first, or alternatively, the deputies show up, but the killers get them, or alternative, or alternative to that. Or the deputies the de are the killers. The deputies are the, yeah, the, the, like a police car shows up, you think, great, 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 but then what comes out of the car, are two more, face. two more people dressed in black wearing, wearing smiley face masks. But uh, that didn't really happen, so. So when you said vehicle, that's what I thought was going to happen. Got it. Yeah, no, actually, my, my, my pet theory is that Gadget is in on it all along. Ooh. Because that's, that's what I think of, like, why does he not pick up the phone and, and then just suddenly show up and, and... Also behind us, not coming towards us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's possible that he, like, it's possible that he, like, went, on, went out to check on you and saw everything and then was trying and then was, well, uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it's a low budget. And, 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 it's a low budget movie. It does. It doesn't have to establish that, that, yeah, that and, much backstory. And also, like, and also, like, let sequel hook thing also kind of implies that it's it's somehow related because I was expecting that maybe the the return address is the convenience store because if if they exactly. just want to 
yeah, fuck with you. Like, remind you what happened. I think oh. that's the most sensible choice. But that, it's that's actually is... better. That that would have been a better. That would have been a better ending. Yeah. No, yeah, but no, now from your coming us. from your old coming from your old shop rather than the, rather than uh, from gadgets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like this just reinforced my theory that the gadget is in on it all along. Yeah. Entirely, entirely. So that was this game. This was a whole lot of fun. Um, if you've got a couple yeah. of minutes, I'd like to do a little. Uh, I'd like to do a little debrief called Stars and Wishes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so cool. I'm going to yeah, stop yeah, the recording because sure. I prefer to do that. Uh, I, I I prefer to do our debrief without like you know randos on the internet see, like eavesdropping. So. Um, if you have, in, I hope you have, in, if anyone who is, ac is actually watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And because uh, I had a whole lot of fun and, uh, and thanks.